Hey guys welcome back. This is a story about what if Naruto went to the world of One Piece. Naruto's age has pet him by as his time is over. Now he attempts to seek out a place for himself in the new world, and it's bigger than he ever figured it to be. Will be epic in length. Before we start thank you for all of the support it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like you can suggest a Naruto fanfiction with a link in the comments if you want me to read it. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic. So let's start. Chapter 7. Can't keep meeting like this, again. Naruto said lazily as he had his hand, arm deep inside of one of the cannons, and this time the loser has to go get Nojiko up. I swear I go way too easy on that girl. He pulled his arm out with a groan and worked the kinks out of it, who lost this time. He asked as he turned around. Johnny pointed at Yosaku who glowered at his sungles clad friend. Naruto nodded and sat on the deck between them a decent distance off. Alright then, you know the rules. First blood wins. And begin. Both men reached for their new swords from their scabbards. Yosaku had a MIV 66 inch nodashi with the sheath placed across his back. 23 inches of it handle, 43 inches of it blade. The handle was purple with silver woven into it. The silver weaving had the appearance of waves, and the sheath was plain black with his name in kanji emblazoned on it. Johnny had an uchigatana, curved for swift drawing. It was more closely resembling something that Zoro would use, however Naruto told him that this blade was more suited towards speed and accuracy, more so than Zoro's swords and definitely more so than Yosaku's sword. His handle was golden and the sheath was black with gold coming into it halfway down there was no particular pattern in it as there were simply silver grooves going horizontally all the way down. Upon hearing Naruto instruct them to begin, Johnny immediately launched himself at Yosaku, drawing his blade in the blink of an eye and slashing at him straight from the draw. Yosaku barely had his sword out in time to block as he felt Yosaku pushing against him. With a growl he shoved hard and threw Johnny off of him, sending him hard against the mast. Yosaku tried to follow up, but as Johnny avoided the strike all he hit was the wood of the mast, cutting into it. Hey! Naruto barked, if you up my ship I'll you up in return. The two ignored him as Yosaku's attempts at striking Johnny didn't really come close to hitting him. Johnny saw many openings that just screamed for him to counter, but he knew that at this point Yosaku was weary enough of his speed attacks to be able to get his nodashi up in time to block, no matter how fast he was moving at this point, he just couldn't swing his own fast enough to hit Johnny. The anger on Yosaku's face was steadily growing as he found himself unable to hit Johnny. He finally overextended on a thrust that left him wide open to Johnny, who wasted no time in lashing out in a counter that Yosaku couldn't recover from, taking a wound on his forearm. And that's match, and your arm. Yosaku you lose. Naruto said as he stood up, you started off decently enough, but then you fell into old habits and Johnny is adjusting to his new sword faster than you. Therefore you lost your edge early. Yosaku swung out his sword in anger, you said first blood. That favors Johnny. He's faster with his sword than me. Naruto simply stared at Yosaku blankly, alright Yosaku, I'll show you exactly when you could have won the fight. He summoned Samahata, covered in bandages over his shoulder and motioned to Johnny, Johnny. Attack me the way you attacked Yosaku at the start of the fight. Johnny nodded and resheathed his sword before attacking Naruto much the same way that he came at his swordsman partner. Naruto blocked the same way that Yosaku did and pushed Johnny against the mast just like Yosaku did, however instead of swinging Samahata at him like Yosaku swung his own sword, Naruto dropped the sword low, freeing one hand to pop Johnny in the mouth with a punch. Johnny smashed the back of his head against the mast from the force of the hit and dropped to the ground. Naruto turned around and showed his hand with the blood of Johnny on it to Yosaku, first blood doesn't mean you have to cut someone. First blood can be obtained anyway. The point towards the exercise is to show that you had the clear-cut advantage at the time of the stoppage. You were trying to fight like Johnny was. This is what I meant when I told you two to find your own style. You should have been bullying Johnny into positions where he couldn't move around, but you were simply trying to cut him the way he was trying to cut you, that would be next to impossible with your sword and speed the way you are. Naruto picked Johnny up and steadied him, dusting him off apologetically, Johnny, you are naturally faster than Yosaku. Yosaku is stronger. That's why I gave you the swords that I did, because they suit you. He turned to Yosaku, now go get Nojiko. 
and be ready to get more than a scratch, because she doesn't play first blood just so you know. Yosaku slumped his shoulders and headed off inside to wake Nojiko as per the conditions of the match. Johnny meanwhile rubbed his mouth and sat down, so how long are you going to keep that guy tied to the front of the ship? Naruto shrugged his shoulders as he walked over to another cannon and stuffed his arm inside it, I don't know, until he stops acting and threatening me maybe. I fed him this morning and the bastard cursed me out. You'd think that he would be friendlier to the guy that controls whether or not he stops being dunked in the water like a teabag. I can't wait until I take him out though, he's probably going to have the skin of an old man after being submerged for so long. Naruto ran over to the front of the boat, hey, how you doing Soren? Soren didn't even bother trying to look up as he could tell his blonde tormentor was grinning, oh I'm just fine Uzumaki. Trust me, this is nothing, I can stay here for as long as I have to. Naruto frowned as he leaned on the railing and Johnny walked over to join him, I don't see why you're still so hostile towards me. I mean, how were you even going to collect my bounty anyway as long as you have your own? Wouldn't the marines try to bust you when you turned in your proof of victory? And besides, I'm offering you a place on my ship. Why would you hunt for bounties when I'm giving you the chance to live and hang with us? Johnny shook his head, I still don't know why you're doing that Naruto and Iki. He did just try to kill you a few days ago. Naruto spared Johnny a glance before looking back out at the ocean, a lot of people have tried to kill me before. A lot of them end up being pretty close to me afterwards too. Soren scoffed from his place in the water, I don't go after bounties because I need the money. I do it so that I can test myself you idiot. Sometimes he really cursed his devil fruit powers, and the fact that he spent an absurd amount of time around its clear and blatant weakness, if I can keep beating pirates like you with ever increasing bounties then one day I know I'll be ready for the one man I really need to fight and kill. Naruto raised an eyebrow, and that would be. Soren smirked, you really don't need to know that. Because once I'm out of here, if you're lucky, I'll simply be on my way and you'll never see me again. He then turned his head directly up to look at Naruto, and if you're not lucky, well I'll have to turn you into a puddle before I go about my way. Naruto grinned down at him, fun. But if I'm going to be your measuring stick for whoever it is you're going to fight then you've got the wrong guy to measure your own growth against, because you can't beat me. You're about 50 years too late to challenge me at the level you're at. What level do you think I'm at? Soren asked in an amused fashion, I'm dying to know. Naruto shrugged, I don't know. You would have destroyed that Hina lady if I had let you keep fighting her, but then again so would I, and I would have been cooler about it. Speaking of cool in our little run in with the marines, you went kind of nuts back there. Anything you would like to share with your new crew? Soren chuckled, my, crew, huh? Well then if you're my crew, let me up out of the water. Naruto shook his head, no, I'm not going to do that. I can't have you F out when you get free and melt my ship. I haven't even named it yet you see. Soren looked around him, yes, I kind of noticed that you stole a marine ship and repainted it. That takes you up a notch in my book, putting you at notch 1. He sighed to himself, you're really not going to let me up or you. Naruto gave a thoughtful look, well you're kind of a loose cannon from what I've seen. I need to know you won't F out on my ship for no reason. Your Akuma no Mi powers make that possibility very dangerous seeing as you can melt the whole thing in just a few seconds. Soren sighed, I'm not going to melt your ship. That would place me directly in the water which would flat out drown me and kill me. Ocean bad, takes away all of Soren's powers. Remember, tell me your deal with the marines and maybe I'll let you up. Naruto gave him a serious look, however if it's an asinine reason you can stay down there and keep enjoying your saltwater bath. Fine, Soren grumbled, I hate marines because when I was a kid there was a particular group of them that got their kicks out of tormenting the weird looking kid. And I was the weird looking kid in case you were wondering. He said, looking up with a deadpan expression. Naruto rolled his eyes, no, really. Go on. Soren mumbled about impatient blonde holes, well this continued on for years until I was finally able to get enough strength to fight back thanks to the Ebi Ebi no Mi. So now I do what I have to, and if marines get in my way may God have mercy on their souls, because I will not. That's all you're getting out of me it. Naruto frowned, not all marines are bad, corrupt people. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. 
Soren said with the utmost seriousness, Marines haven't enforced the power in this world. You might find a few out of how many Marines all over the world that are actually worth A, but a few bright spots can't make up for a cancer like that. Tell me you haven't seen a Marine or two that just needed to die in order to make the world a better place. Naruto rubbed the back of his neck, well you've got me on that one. You sound like some kind of revolutionary or something with the way you're talking. Soren simply looked back out at the ocean, call me what you want to. I don't really care. The only people worse than those dogs of the world government are those mutts of the world government. One of them in particular, he growled. Naruto was about to question who he was talking about until his danger senses told him to look out, and it was a good thing he did too, because a gunswow intended for his backside was fired at him. Naruto made a, yipe, noise as the swow hit him in the intended area before he burst into smoke and a log took his place. Nojiko stood with a smoking flintlock pistol and an upset look on her face while Yosaku stood behind her with a somewhat busted up mug, got Nojiko Ainu up Naruto and Iki. Nojiko looked around for Naruto who had disappeared after her swow had missed. She worked hard, trying to keep this ship of idiots going in the proper direction, and the freaky weather of the Grand Line wasn't really helping much at all. There was a hailstorm yesterday, honestly hail. Here. Getting awoken by one of the idiots that would be lost and probably dead without her keeping them on track was the last thing that she wanted to have happen today, and hearing that it was all, Naruto Anaki's idea, made her want to find one particular blonde and cause physical bodily harm to him. Where is that idiot so I can shoot him and feel better? She asked testily, and where the did he get the log from? We're on a ship, shooting me in the back without warning Noji-chan. Naruto said as he suddenly appeared at her side, wrapped around her shoulder, I'm starting to rub off on you I see. And you were too close, I felt you coming before you fired. Try to find the perfect range to hit me off guard at. He was then cracked over the head with the butt of the pistol, like that. He said, rubbing his head. Stupid, Nojiko said as she looked at the log pose strapped to her wrist, are you keeping us on track? Naruto rolled his eyes, of course I am, I haven't touched the wheel since you put us towards the right direction. This earned him another swow from the pistol that he dodged by jumping over the side of the ship, what? What the did I do now? Nojiko stomped up to the wheel and began to turn it the right way according to the log pose, you don't just let the wheel sit you dumb, it will turn on its own that way and we don't want that. You have to make sure that we're not being taken off course by the flow of the ocean, the wind, all kind of things. What kind of captain are you? Naruto grinned at her while hanging from the banister, a sexy captain. Do you want to feel sexy with the captain Tunoji-chan? Once again he was forced to dodge another swow by dropping down and sticking to the side of the ship with chakra, I'm starting to think that giving her guns wasn't such a good idea. Having some trouble with the pretty lady Uzumaki. Soren said, grinning at Naruto's current predicament with Nojiko. Nah. Naruto yurred him, this is just how we play. Naruto dodged another gunswow as Nojiko leaned over the side to shoot at him, as you can clearly see she likes to play a little rough, but I'm okay with that. Get up here and let me yell at you for being stupid. How I even thought that going with you out here was a good idea is beyond me at this point. I swear, you're going to get us all killed. Here I am, trying to set our route, and you keep getting us lost. How are we going to get anywhere around here? Nojiko griped from up top, shaking her pistol at him. Naruto sighed contently as he stayed stuck to the side of the ship, yep, she's absolutely crazy about me. Soren sweet dropped, yeah, I'm sure. I can just feel the love from here. As the sun began basking them in its warm setting glow, the ship trudged along in a cove. Where the air we now noji chan? Naruto said irritably from the front of the ship, looking as they pulled into an area with weird looking mountains, why the do these mountains look like cactuses? Soren yelled up from his place tied to the front of the ship, we're at Cactus Island. A smirk was firmly planted on his face, you guys are going to love it here, I'm sure. He said somewhat forebodingly. Nojiko ran from inside up to where Naruto was standing, I hope so, since we have to stay until the log pose resets. Naruto walked up to her and watched as she marked down their path that had been taken on her map, so how long do you think that would take? Nojiko shrugged, I'm not sure, you know how long it took for us to get a reading in the first place, remember? It could be hours or days. Either way we need to go ashore for a bit. Alright then. Naruto said, 
not having any real problems with that, can you help me out and go tell the guys to get ready to go back on land? Nojiko raised a questioning brow, you really aren't afraid of getting off this ship and going anywhere in the Grand Line are you? Getting a grin from Naruto is her clear-cut response on the matter. Hey! Soren yelled indignantly, what about me you bastard? I've been down here for five god days already. Let me up. Naruto stroked his chin in thought, no. You're still on punishment for having Saikovich tendencies. Oh come on. Soren said indignantly, there aren't even any marines here. I promise I won't fly off the handle and go on a killing spree okay. Just let me out of here already, I'm totally waterlogged and these ropes are chafing. Naruto turned to Nojiko, should I let him up? I mean he has been a good boy lately, and I'm trying to be a benevolent captain, and I don't think drifting into town with some random guy strapped to the front of the ship would go over too well with the locals. Nojiko looked over the ship at Soren who was looking up at her with his version of puppy dog eyes before turning back to Naruto, can you beat him again if he does decide to lose his sense and do something stupid while we're here? Coming in on our ship does make him our responsibility you know. Naruto picked at his ear, oh yes. Not a thing has changed since the first time we fought except that I've had him soaked in seawater for most of the week thus making him far weaker than he would be otherwise. Naruto looked over the edge at Soren. besides, Mr. Acid Pants will behave won't he? Otherwise I'll have to uncork the beating of a lifetime on him. Soren's eye twitched, you are so lucky that threatening your life right now would leave me tied to the front of your stupid ship. Naruto cupped his ear at Soren. what was that? I can't hear you over the sounds of the waves crashing against the ship. Did you say, please leave me down here Uzumaki-sama, I love tasting nothing but saltwater for 5 days and 5 nights. Well if you insist. Soren paled, okay. Alright, I'll be civil, just let me up it. Naruto smirked and looked at Nojiko who simply went off to get her things for the landing, yeah sure, okay, go ahead and let him up Naruto-kun. I'm going to get some guns and ammo in case you attract some more trouble while we're here. As he went over the side of the ship to untie Soren, he responded to the girl, I don't attract anything Noji-chan. Trouble gravitates towards me. There's a difference. What possible difference could there be? Her voice sounded out from topside. Naruto started undoing Soren's ropes, if I attracted trouble I would be hooked into doing things without having any control over the situation. When things gravitate towards me I can choose whether or not to get involved or just let it pee on by. It just so happens that more often than not I choose to get involved. Because you're retarded. Soren said as Naruto finished freeing him. Naruto gave him a short glare, I can still just let go of you and watch you sink to the bottom of the sea like a rock you know. At that point Naruto looked ahead to where the ship was heading in order to stay put for them all to go ashore, oh no way. Naruto Aniki, what the is going on? Yosaku asked as the entire crew, plus Soren, walked through the throngs of people waiting for them and celebrating them as they got off of the ship and got onto dry land. Naruto scratched his head, I honestly haven't the faintest idea. I'm not exactly well versed on how people normally do things. He saw banners and signs and heard people cheering pirates, don't people usually hate and fear pirates? And how the did they know that about us? We don't even have a Jolly Roger. Nojiko nudged his arm, I thought you said you weren't a pirate. Naruto shrugged, there are far worse things to be called in this world than a pirate. And the more I've denied it the more I've been called out for being one, thus I have decided that going with the flow on this one would be the best course of action, and it seems to be working out just swimmingly so far. Soon enough they were greeted by a large man with a strange colonial wig look for his hair who was for some reason holding a saxophone, I am Agarapoi, the mayor of this village. Welcome to Whiskey Peak, the town of music and liquor. You're the second pirate crew to arrive here today, and we'd like to ask you to join the same festivities that we plan to throw for them. Naruto deadpanned, is the first crew comprised of a guy with three swords, a guy with blonde hair and weird eyebrows, a guy with a long nose, a wow girl with orange hair, and a spaz kid with a scar under his eye and a straw hat. Agarapoi blinked at Naruto, um, yes. How did you know that? Everyone else stared at Naruto who pointed out in the water where the Going Mary was situated, how many other ships have that sheep thing as its figurehead. He moved past the mayor, okay then, let's go pop in and say hey to everybody. Naruto led everyone to a tavern that sounded very lively and kicked the front door open, attracting all eyes to them, where are my lovable strafut idiots? 
asked Soren tapped Yosaku on his shoulder, who are his lovable strafut idiots. Johnny and Yosaku turned around. The Sungul's wearing member of the duo grinned, we'll introduce you right after we get a few drinks in us. It's party time. Nojiko looked around the tavern with her eyes stopping on her target, Nami. W what are you doing drinking like that? She immediately made her way over to her sister who was engaged in a contest of the alcoholic variety, her opponent just falling out as she reached her side. Nami lowered her mug and stared in disbelief, Nojiko. What are you doing here? Why are you on the grand line? Nojiko pointed back at Naruto who was currently amusing himself poking an expanded Luffy who was gorging himself on plates and plates of food brought out by the chefs, I left Kami Island with Naruto-kun and he decided that he wanted to see all of the weird stuff that he kept hearing was out here so now here we are. We almost ran into you at Logatown by the way. Nami blinked at her, you went through Reverse Mountain. Nojiko glowered, no, Naruto-kun distracted me and let us get off course enough that we ended up in the calm belt, and we got through that way. You went through the calm belt and you're alive. Nami shouted at her blue-haired sister, how did you pull that off? Nojiko grinned, Naruto-kun took a discarded marine ship when he left the island. Apparently they're equipped to handle the sea kings that are all over the place, he can make his own wind current too. Nodding at the story, Nami turned back to where Naruto was fighting with Luffy over a plate of meat, Naruto-kun. My guess is 24. Naruto was distracted by this, allowing Luffy to snatch the plate away and shovel the food down his throat, no. Try again Nami-chan. Nami smiled and threw an arm around her shoulder, well my older sister is following me into the grand line. That's something to celebrate. As she said this, two mugs were placed in front of them both, drink up. Nojiko looked at the beverage nervously, um, I don't know. Nami gestured around her, come on Nojiko. It's a celebration. Everything will be fine. Nojiko grabbed the mug tentatively, well okay. Four hours later, Johnny and Yosaku were currently attempting to match Zoro in his liquor feed contests against other patrons of the tavern and were failing miserably to do so. Usopp was telling lies about how he braved the calm belt and killed a sea king and Sanji was surrounded by a mib amount of women that were fawning over him. Soren walked over to Sanji in the midst of his heaven on earth, hey man, how's that itching you were telling me about? It still isn't raw and everything down there right? I said you should go to doctor but you never listened to me. Upon hearing this, the women scooted away from Sanji with a wary look. Sanji sputtered in disbelief before turning to glare at Soren, I hate you. Soren was grinning widely with his sharp canines, I'm Soren. Naruto was still sitting next to Luffy, marveling about how much he could eat. There was only one thing that Naruto was willing to gorge on that much, speaking of which. Naruto summoned one of the chefs that were feeding Luffy, hey, do you guys think you could stop throwing things down into the bottomless pit here and get me a few bowls of ramen? The chef stared at him, ramen. I'm sorry sir, I don't think I've ever heard of this, ramen, before. Naruto slammed his forehead into the table hard enough to crack it and pulled it up with tears streaming down his face, this place. The open seas too. What kind of miserable, kami forsaken, blasphemous, heathenous barbarians are the lot of you? Where the can I get some ramen in this world? It stopped being funny three months ago. He was interrupted from his rant and potential destruction of the entire building when an inebriated Nojiko sidled up to him with a blush on her face and an empty mug in her hand, you want to know something Naruto-kun. She slurred to him. Naruto looked at her, noticing how out of her gourd she was at the moment before he looked at Nami, who was still drinking grown men under the table, geez, I can see they're not blood related based off of pure alcohol tolerance alone, Kami woman. He noticed Nojiko getting closer and closer to him, enlighten me Noji-chan. You're really stupid, she said, poking him in the chest. So I've been told explicitly and repeatedly for years and years and years. Naruto said with an amused look on his face. Naruto-kun, 17. Naruto looked over at Nami, no Nami-chan, keep trying. He then felt Nojiko place her head on his chest, are you okay Nojiko? No, Nojiko said. He could have figured that, though the fact that she stayed conscious after four hours of drinking was still remarkable for a normal woman. But she continued to speak, the whole entire reason I came on this trip in the first place is starting to look like some kind of impossible delusion or something. Naruto raised an eyebrow, hey, why did you come with me in the first place? 
you were never clear on the reason. Johnny and Yosaku came because they want to get strong. Soren's here because I tied him to the ship and made him go with us, I'm here because I'm bored with life. Why are you here? If this was some big secret, hopefully she was smashed enough to be loose ped on the reason. Alcohol, the safe cracker for all of your mental secrets. She lifted her head off of his chest and looked him in his eyes with a half-lidded gaze, you, you big dummy. Me. Naruto asked, you're here because of me. Yes. Nojiko said, sighing as she snuggled back into the warmth of Naruto's chest while ignoring the still-going sounds of the Whiskey Peak partygoers, you are an incredibly strange man. You sometimes seem to have the power to end all existence at naught but a whim, and yet you seem so out of character for someone like that. You treat Johnny and Yosaku as if you weren't superior to them. You have a sense of morality that you do a bad job of trying to hide, even back when you said it's because it was more fun to be a good guy than a bad guy, liar. But you have an attracting quality to you that I couldn't ignore, and that I wouldn't just let leave my home never to return. We all know that if I hadn't come with you, you would have never come back to Kokoyashi village again. Naruto looked at her apologetically, it's kind of better that way Noji-chan. There are a lot of things about me that you don't know. Some of which you would never believe, some of which you would never understand. You have no idea, none of you do. So tell me then, she asked, stroking his whisker marks. He could tell where this was going, and every moral fiber in his being was telling him to stop her, that it wasn't right to have this happen while she was like this, but he simply couldn't bring himself to do it, talk to me. I came to get to know you better. You're interesting Naruto-kun, I want to be close to you. We are close. Naruto tried to reason. What the was wrong with him? There was a wow girl, currently crushing on him, that had just made to sit in his lap and was apparently dying to make out with him, and he was trying to talk her out of it. If Jiraiya was alive he would have backhanded him with a studded leather glove on for that, you are one of my precious people Nojiko, I would do pretty much anything for you. Nojiko smiled, I want to be closer. Can you do that for me? She moved her face closer to his. Maybe, he said, doing absolutely nothing to stop her. Hey, she was a big girl. If she wanted to mack with him in the middle of a tavern then who was he to question her adult decision? After all, this feeling didn't just come from nowhere. At least some part of her wanted it, right? Alcohol just pushed that feeling to the forefront. Nojiko traced his jawline with S as she moved towards his mouth. Once more Naruto did nothing to bring the proceedings to a close, allowing her to finally meet her with his. Quickly letting Nojiko take control of the situation as she was pushing to do anyway he allowed her tongue entry to his mouth, and noted that her tasting of alcohol did absolutely nothing to make this seem any less pleasant. Naruto decided to break them apart to make a smart remark about the situation but noticed that Nojiko had pet out right after they broke away. He smiled down at her and stood up to find somewhere to put her for the night, even if she doesn't remember this tomorrow she's going to have one of a headache. As Naruto came back into the main area after putting Nojiko in a bed upstairs he sweet dropped at seeing Luffy, Sanji, Usopp, Johnny and Yosaku unconscious on the ground and by themselves. He idly wondered where Zoro and Nami were, but decided that wherever they were was better than pet out on the floor. At that time he decided to only deal with the people he had the responsibility of watching over. Wake up. Naruto said, kicking at the two swordsmen on the ground, I swear, I gave Noji-chan the benefit of the doubt when it came to blacking out because she never drinks, ever. But you too, get your s up. Don't sleep like that when you're hammered. You'll die choking on puke. Naruto looked around as the two grumbled and sat up, where did all the villagers go? Johnny and Yosaku blinked and looked at each other, we don't know. But where's Zoro and Iki? Naruto shrugged before a voice came from behind the bar, Zoro's out dealing with our little problem at the moment. Naruto walked over and saw Soren sitting down behind the bar with a bottle in his hand, what the are you doing back here? And what problem are you talking about? Soren shrugged and took a swig of what was in his hand. I'm back here because I didn't feel like fake ping out like the fake samurai or the orange haired tart in order to get everyone to go away so I just sped back here and decided to get smashed while I waited for you to stop inspecting Nojiko's tonsils. And the problem I'm talking about is the ton of bounty hunters that have knocked out most of the strafuts with food and drink and are planning to turn everyone in for their bounties. 
What? was Naruto's intelligent reply. Soren stood up wobbly with a groan. Whiskey Peak is kind of famous with experienced bounty hunters on the Grand Line. The place that captures pirates starting on their way and turns them in. That's what they're going to do to you Mr. 55 million. They can try. Naruto scoffed. And anyway, why the didn't you tell us this when you told us where we were baldy? Soren grinned and steadied himself on the bar. It may have had something to do with me having saltwater soaked into my brain for the better part of a week. Or maybe it just sped my mind. Anyway I'm totally useless right now. I'm completely and utterly buggered. I got too sauced trying to increase the amount of fluids in my system the fun way while waiting so even if we do end up fighting all I'll be able to do is watch the room spin and puke, though the puke would probably end up eating through whatever it landed on as if it were made of toilet paper. Naruto sighed, just, go get the boat ready so we can get out of here before things get any worse. Johnny, Yosaku, go help Zoro. I'm going to get Noji-chan and maybe find Nami-chan if I can. What about them? Yosaku asked, gesturing towards the unconscious other members of the Strafut crew. Naruto started walking away, heading upstairs, they're fine, Johnny and Yosaku came upon Zoro having the time of his life as he climbed up the side of a building with a huge grin on his face after knocking out a kid with a gun and a nun that tried to use a corrosive gas on his eyes. Apparently facing down a town full of bounty hunters was his idea of a good time. As the bounty hunters climbed up the ladder he used after him, Zoro tipped it over in delight, sending them all falling back to the ground. Johnny and Yosaku looked at each other with Yosaku's hand creeping towards the sword on his back, should we jump in? Johnny's hand moved towards his own blade down by his waist, well Naruto and Iki did tell us to go help Zoro and Iki. With a grin the two men jumped directly into the fray of bounty hunters who were shooting at Zoro as he hopped between buildings. Zoro was still making a mockery of everyone he was coming across until he ended up being pinned down by a large dark-skinned woman that had on BR knuckles. The following punch was enough to crack the ground beneath him and send blood pouring down his face. Upon seeing this, the bounty hunters smirked, thinking that Zoro was finally defeated. Johnny and Yosaku shrugged and continued cutting through the sidetracked enemies. Agarapoi was confused by the pair's nonchalant attitude at seeing one of their own taken down, why are you two still fighting? There are still way more of us than you and one of your most powerful fighters was just taken down. That wasn't enough to beat Zoro and Iki you idiot. Johnny snapped as he dodged gunfire before cutting down three of the shooters, that wouldn't have even beaten one of us. A shout of pain attracted attention to where Zoro had the large woman's face palmed in his hand, see. Zoro held her up with one hand in a claw hold, what happened to all of that strength of yours? You got enough of punching me in the face. He released the woman's face, revealing that the pressure of the squeeze had rendered her unconscious. Miss Monday loses. What is this, some kind of joke? Zoro ed away the blood falling from his face, are we going to keep going, Baroque works. I'm kind of tired of playing with you lightweights. That info from the marines must be wrong. This has to be the guy that's worth all that money, there's no way that stupid kid in the hat could be stronger than this. Think we should jump in again Yosaku? Johnny asked as they disposed of the last of the no names. Nah. Yosaku responded as he leaned against a building, Zoro Anaki's got this. Yo Zoro. Naruto said as he walked through the crowd of the remaining members, Mr. 8, or Agarapoi the mayor of the town, Mr. 9, a man with orange hair, facial markings and a king's crown, and Miss Wednesday, a woman with blue hair pulled back in a ponytail. Eventually he turned around standing by Zoro's side, having fun. Zoro smirked, not really. Other than getting to test out the swords I bought in Logatown this hasn't really done much for me. You. Naruto grinned, I got to make out with Nojiko. Who cares if she doesn't remember it in the morning? I will, and that's all that matters. Now who the air these clowns? Baroque works. Zoro started, they're after the 20 million belly bounty. Naruto raised an eyebrow, why would they want that one? I'm worth 55 million. Shouldn't they be trying to sa knife into my ribs instead? And why are they fighting you? Luffy's blacked out in the tavern, he ain't getting up anytime soon. Zoro grinned, they think it's a typo and I'm the captain. Fun. Naruto said in reply. Enough. Miss Wednesday said as she sat atop a giant duck, let's show these guys their place. The duck quacked in response, who told you to sit down? She yelled when it did just as she stated and sat down. 
Naruto and Zoro sweet dropped at the display, is this for real? Zoro asked. I'm not sure, but I'll be ed if it's not mildly entertaining. Naruto said with his arms crossed across his chest. Paying attention to others will get you killed. Yelled Mr. Nine as he jumped off of a rooftop, smashing a steel bat into Zoro's sword who lifted it in defense, you might break your swords blocking like that. These things are made of steel you know. Zoro sighed and put up only one sword as Mr. Nine swung away at him, is that all you can do? He blocked one more strike and swung his arm away, sending the man flying, that was way too easy. Naruto rolled his eyes, I thought people were supposed to be strong on the grand line. If this is the best they've got I might as well have stayed in the east blue, running amok there for all this trip has been worth so far. Zoro nodded in agreement, isn't there anyone that takes this seriously? I do, get ready to die boys. Called Miss Wednesday standing atop the duck, look at my body carefully. Naruto grinned, no problems there. Miwaku no Memai danced captivating dizziness dance. Bibi danced, trying to disorient the two with the spirals on her dress. I so wish I had a camera right now, Naruto said, not particularly focusing on her clothing at the time as he was making a valiant attempt to burn this vision into the back of his mind for life. He saw Zoro fall to his knees and turned his attention to him, what are you gay? Get up and stare at this woman dance right now you. Taking their distraction as an opportunity she placed a sharpened jewel on a wire around her finger and spun it rapidly, let's finish this Karu. Peace slasher. The duck let out a quack as it charged Naruto and Zoro, however it missed them both by a mile and charged right past, where are you going? She yelled at her duck as it ran off into the distance, I'm going to fall off. Naruto let out anime tears at seeing her run off, no, hot, bad guy lady girl run away, come back. Zoro shook his head in pity, for some reason I'm really mad at myself for bothering to fight with these people. Agarapapa. Naruto and Zoro scattered as a burst of gunfire ricocheted where they once stood. The mayor had guns hide themselves once more in his curls, I'll show you all our real abilities. Zoro growled from behind the cover of a building, that gun of his is really going to be troublesome to get to. Naruto appeared, standing on the wall right above him, Noji-chan is a better swow than he is. Mr. Eight all of a sudden burst from a pile of rubble, flying bat. The top of his bat flew off attached to a rope and wrapped around Zoro's arm, got you. Naruto pointed lamely from his spot on the wall, um Zoro, you've got a little something there. Zoro looked up at Naruto with a glare, I noticed. He tugged on the rope and frowned, steel rope. Mr. Nine laughed loudly, you can't get free now, get him Mr. Eight. That's right. Miss Wednesday said, if you move, your sleeping friend here will just have to die. She had a dagger pointed at a sleeping Luffy, still bloated from his meal earlier. Naruto looked over at Luffy dryly, and you follow this guy because. Zoro palmed his forehead, it was a vow on my honor, prepare to fire. Mr. Eight shouted as he readied his guns from his curls, firing them at Zoro. Good luck with that, Naruto said as he shunshined away from the line of fire. Thanks a lot you rat bastard. Zoro took action and pulled hard on the rope on his arm, dragging Mr. Nine right into the path, taking the hit for him as he slung the crowned man at Miss Wednesday, knocking her and her duck Karu flat. What? Mr. Eight said in disbelief as he watched the results of his attempted attack. I think we called it a victory where I come from. Mr. Eight turned around to see Naruto with his fist ed back before all he saw from that point forward were stars, now where did my two half-witted apprentices go? Johnny and Yosaku finished off the rest of the nameless bounty hunters with matching grins on their faces, well at least we know we're better than a bunch of these guys. Yosaku said as he sheathed his sword. Johnny nodded in agreement as a disinterested voice rang out, another boring Einman, taking care of the weaklings here shouldn't be our job at all. Johnny placed his hand back on his blade as he and Yosaku turned to face them, who are you two? Mr. Five, said a dark-skinned man with wild black hair, a brown trench coat with a pink scarf, a pair of sungles, and the number five on the left chest of his coat. Miss Valentine, was the response from a woman with short blonde hair and bright green eyes. She had on a yellow hat that was rimmed with orange, and a yellow dress with a lemon pattern, lemon earrings, and white high-heeled shoes. Over her shoulder was a green umbrella with blue stripes. Naruto sighed and looked down as Zoro was drinking a random bottle of liquor, taking in the night scenery, did you have to knock out the wow girl Zoro? 
I wanted her to dance some more, he said, almost pouting at the situation. Soren came up from behind in the shadows, wow. You guys sure had some fun here didn't you? He asked after seeing the amount of bodies strewn about the area. Naruto walked over to Soren, the ship is ready to roll at any time. Soren nodded, yeah, turned the right way and everything. Do you know how hard it was to move that thing by myself? Drunk. Next time send the other two. Naruto shook his head, no way in. They're drunk too, and even if they were sober they would have sunk in the thing just trying to unfurl the main sail. Naruto noticed that Mr. 8 and Miss Wednesday were waking up, man they can take a hit. Naruto and Iki. Johnny and Yosaku yelled as they jumped up and appeared at his side in a blur. What you guys? Naruto asked. They both pointed off where they found two people walking up. Mr. 8 noticed immediately who they were, Mr. 5. Miss Valentine. Naruto smirked, Miss Valentine. Another wow woman, I must be some kind of lucky tonight or something. Mr. 5 looked down on Mr. 8 and Miss Wednesday, you two should be ashamed of yourselves. Losing like that, Miss Valentine let out a laugh, that's the difference between weaklings like you and us. Mr. 8 grit his teeth, you came here to laugh at us did you? Not quite. Mr. 5 responded, we came here because it's our duty. You shouldn't ask us that. Mr. 8 smirked, that's fantastic. With your abilities those swordsmen and that blonde boy can be defeated. Mr. 5 sneered down at his fallen form, what the are you babbling about now? You think we came all the way to the Grand Line just to help you here? It's supposed to be a punishment so the boss sent us. The boss said that, someone knows my secret, and I don't know how much this person knows. But our company's principle is that everything must remain a secret. No one must know about each other's past or even an identity. The person that knows the boss's identity shouldn't be allowed to live. Miss Valentine took over. After we investigated the case we found out that there is someone in Baroque works from a particular country sneaking into our little group. Mr. 8 was sweating bullets at this point, so they finally know the truth. Naruto looked down as he took the bottle from Zoro and took a swig for himself, oh man, this is some quality random bad guy theater. Zoro nodded as he took the bottle back, I need to get Luffy out of there somehow. Mr. 5 smirked, the traitors are people that mysteriously disappeared from Alabasta. At that point, Mr. 8 snapped and jumped up, activating his gun curls, firing at Mr. 5. Miss Wednesday cried out in alarm, Agarum. He turned back frantically, please get away now. That's not going to work. Miss Valentine giggled before smashing Miss Wednesday in the head with a kick, breaking the piece holding her hair in its ponytail before pulling out her umbrella and floating back up into the air, laughing the entire time. As Miss Wednesday looked up angrily, Agarum was thrown at her feet, smoking. Mr. 5 came walking closer as Miss Valentine landed at his side, the traitors are Agarum, the leader of the Royal Guard of Alabasta, and the Princess of Alabasta, Nefertari Bibi. Mr. 8 bowed down, Miss Wednesday is a princess. Stop doing stupid things. She barked at him. Zoro took advantage of the confusion and pulled Luffy out of the crossfire quickly. Mr. 5 picked his nose, boss ordered us to get rid of you both. As Bibi readied herself to fight, Mr. 9 took a stance in front of her with both of his bats at the ready. I don't really know what's going on here, but for as long as we've been partners and friends I have to help you. Please hurry and get out of here. He then tumbled towards Mr. 5 with his bats drawn back to strike, double ultimate bat. The mission is the most important thing. Mr. 5 stated before he pulled a booger from his nose, friendship is a stupid thing that gets you killed as you're about to find out. He fed his booger at the charging Mr. 9, blowing the man sky high as it detonated upon contact. Naruto and Zoro stared at the scene, that's one dangerous booger. Zoro remarked absently. A firm grasp was latched on his leg, hey what are you doing? Agarum looked up at him weakly, you are all very strong people, and due to that I have a request to ask of you. I need you to protect the princess. I cannot myself due to the enemy's power from the Akuma no Mi. All right. Naruto said before Zoro could answer for himself. What? Zoro nearly yelled, why are you going to get involved in this? Naruto picked at his ear, because I'm bored, and you stole all of the fights. He then turned to where Bibi was riding off on Karu, and besides, she danced for me. He narrowed his eyes as he saw Mr. 5 and Miss Valentine preparing to take off after her. Please. 
Agaram pleaded, protect the princess. If you can get her to the kingdom of Alabasta we will reward you handsomely. A great prize. Is that really true? Nami said, appearing suddenly between them, utterly shocking the out of Zoro and even Naruto, that's pretty interesting, how about one billion belly? Agaram freaked out at Nami's negotiating. Naruto pointed at her in shock, are you a ninja? Because nobody ever gets the drop on me like that. Zoro looked at her, didn't you get drunk and black out? Nami smiled at him, there's no way I'm going to sleep in a town that throws random parties for pirates. I faked it the entire time. Naruto grinned, Nojiko sure didn't. Nami and he shared a laugh at that for the moment. Nami turned her attention back to Agaram, so are you going to pay me that one billion belly? If we don't help your princess will be dead for sure. Naruto's grin dropped as he started walking off in the direction of Bibi's retreat, she's not going to die whether he pays you or not. Nami turned towards him in surprise, Naruto-kun what are you doing? He didn't even turn back as he walked along with his hands in his pockets, I'm not just going to sit here when I feel something bad going on and I actually have the power to stop it. To just lay back and watch horrible things happen just because they don't concern me, I don't want to turn into some kind of despicable guy that would do something like that. Nami watched as he walked off, Naruto-kun. She yelled to him, 34. No. Three strikes and you're out. Try again next time Nami-chan. He said before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Nami sat staring before turning around, well go and help him Zoro. We can negotiate with the princess after he saves her. Why the do I have to do? Zoro snapped back, if you want to do that why don't you go by yourself? Why do I have to help you get the money? While Zoro and Nami were arguing about the situation, Luffy woke up needing to head to the bathroom. Nami turned around confidently, have you forgotten that you still owe me 200,000 belly that you have to pay back with three times the interest? Zoro started sweating, I don't actually have to pay that back right. Nami looked at him sadly, you can't even keep one promise. Hitting Zoro right in a nerve, if you do this consider this a wash on the debt. Zoro gnashed his teeth and stomped off after Naruto's shunshin, grumbling curses at Nami the entire way. She looked down at the fallen Agara Maring Lee, don't worry about it. Both of those guys are really strong. Mr. Five had just disposed of Miss Monday with an exploding lariat, I can turn any part of my body into an explosive. You won't get away Nefertari Bibi. He fed another booger at her that was split in half by a shuriken that sent it to both sides around Bibi before it exploded, keeping her safe. Man, I've still got it. Naruto said as he appeared in front of the girl in a puff of smoke. Mr. Whiskers, Bibi said in surprise at seeing him, forcing Naruto to face fault. Naruto stood up and turned around angrily, giving her a look with his eyes closed, Whiskers. Mr. Whiskers. Not red coat guy, not spiky, not sexy captain man, not even blondie, but Mr. Whiskers. I'm not a god cat woman. Bibi put on an angry face, why do you have to show up right now? She pulled out her peace slasher and made to attack Naruto but let it stop spinning when he started radiating killing intent that made her choke slightly. He turned back to the two members of Baroque Works with a serious look, calm down, I'm here to keep you safe. Mr. Five crossed his arms as he looked at the blonde man standing in front of him, so you're the one that destroyed this town. Naruto shook his head, no, that was all Zoro and my boys. I was going to scold them for not fighting you, but after seeing what you can do with a booger I have to say, it's probably better that they didn't try. I would like to see how they would do against someone like you, but don't need to piece them back together yet either. Why would you want to protect the princess of a country that isn't yours? Mr. Five asked. Naruto shrugged, she danced for me. He finished with a smile. Mr. Five smirked, it doesn't matter, you don't seem all that strong to me. You're just another worthless obstacle just like all the rest. Miss Valentine pulled off her hat, smiling widely at Naruto, that's right. You're a cute obstacle, but an obstacle nonetheless. And you'll be crushed on the ground by my power. Boom, what the was that? Naruto asked as he turned around to see what the ruckus was before sweet dropping, boy. What the is this? Naruto saw Zoro and Luffy fighting and messing up even more property for no foreseeable reason. Naruto rolled his eyes and returned his attention back to Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, okay, while those two are doing that, I'll be kicking your ass, that is if you don't just leave right now. Miss Valentine laughed at his tone, feel free to try. 
she said before Naruto appeared between both of them and thrust out both of his arms, smashing them into adjacent buildings. Naruto had his head lowered with a dark expression, well since you asked me so nicely I guess I'm obligated to actually follow through on that little threat of mine. Too bad for you, but could you at least stay alive long enough to make me work? It is two on one after all. Mr. Five pulled himself out of the rubble of the destroyed wall that Naruto sent him into, you're really in a hurry to die aren't you? Naruto's grin turned on him, you're not going to quit. That makes this so much better. He saw Miss Valentine do the same before jumping in the air. Naruto squinted and smirked as he looked up, nice view. Miss Valentine blushed and looked down angrily, now it's really time for you to die. With the power of Kilo Kilo no Mi Kilo Kilo Fruit, I'll crush you like an ant under the weight of 10,000 kilograms 22,046.23 pounds. That's a lot of weight. Naruto said vacantly, you're going to want to move princess. Crash, stop fighting you idiots. You could wake the dead with that crap. Naruto yelled over at Luffy and Zoro who were still duking it out. The shadow of Miss Valentine appeared over him, oh yeah, I'm about to get squished. We're going to die. Bibi shouted as she covered her head. Naruto scoffed and pulled Bibi to his side as he ran through one-handed hand seals just as Miss Valentine collided with the ground, kicking up a huge amount of dust and making a mib crater. She floated off of her point of impact to reveal two smashed logs in place of Naruto and Bibi, what? Where did they go? Yo. Is this your? Miss Valentine turned around to see Naruto clutching Mr. Five's collar in his hand. His sungles were broken and he was missing a few teeth along with his broken nose and swollen jaw. Naruto tossed his lifeless body down at her side and dusted off his hands. Bibi stood behind him, watching Naruto handle the Baroque Works member with his bare hands after seemingly teleporting them out of harm's way in the blink of an eye. What did you do to him? Miss Valentine asked warily. She wasn't much for fighting on her own. While Mr. Five would keep opponents off guard with his bomb attacks she would float over the battlefield waiting for an opening to finish. Fighting alone was not necessarily her forte. However she wasn't going to give up without a fight and jumped into the air once more. Naruto rolled his eyes and jumped into the air once he saw her at the apex of her jump just as she was beginning to fall. Naruto air hiked off of her face, taking advantage of her near weightlessness and tilting her backwards just as she put her weight back on, 10,000 kilograms falling on your head. I wonder what that would feel like, he said as he latched around her body for a pile driver, holding her in place as they both fell back down to the ground with a tremendous crash. Naruto let go of her, noticing that she was still breathing, but was out cold, you lowered your weight when I first latched onto you, but my collective weight and yours was still good enough to take you out. Naruto's eyes darted behind him and he picked Miss Valentine up before the area he was standing at was rocked with an explosion. What the was that supposed to be? Your partner was right there. Naruto growled out, forcing the reawakened Mr. Five to turn back to where Vivi was. He set Miss Valentine down and turned back to Mr. Five with an angry face, when I dodged she was going to take the hit instead. That would have killed her, she's defenseless. Mr. Five spit blood on the ground, so what? She knows that the mission is more important than her life. You act as if I should be concerned for her, if she could move that would be great, but if she died from the attack I'd get a replacement partner. Naruto cracked his knuckles, how about I replace you? Mr. Five chuckled, you got two lucky swows in. Touch me again and see how well that goes for you. Naruto grinned fairly, challenge accepted. Kei's no Yeba blade of wind. The air around Naruto's hand began to shimmer as he ran towards Mr. Five far slower than usual, making a show out of his forthcoming attack. Mr. Five prepared himself to counter, the second his hand makes contact with me, I'll blow whatever he touches to kingdom come. He won't get up from that. His entire plan was to detonate himself the moment Naruto touched him, since the explosion wouldn't harm him. As Naruto drew closer he prepared himself, but before Naruto was anywhere near punching range he swung his hand out. Mr. Five thought he was nearsighted or something, until a warm feeling ran down his torso. He looked down and saw a deep gash in his chest bleeding profusely, but but how? Naruto smirked as he let the wind jutsu around his hand die, with that attack I don't need to touch you to kill you. Five feet is more than enough room for me to kill you with it. I cut you clean through. Goodbye. Mr. Five crumpled to the ground dead before exploding, leaving no trace of himself behind. 
Naruto turned back around to Bibi with a grin, how about that? Crash, it you too. I am coming over there right now. I'm tired of this crap. The only one that can wreck large amounts of public and private property is me, and that's because I don't pay taxes. Naruto yelled as he saw Luffy and Zoro continuing their scrum across the town. Chapter 8. Go your own way, man Nami-chan. Naruto said as he stood over Zoro and Luffy's fallen forms, poking at them with his foot, you sure aren't very creative when you want someone to stop or you. Kami, I could have thought of that myself. Nami simply wiped off her knuckles, then why didn't you? Naruto shrugged, I don't know, because part of me thought that watching them slug it out was hilarious. I have to say, watching other people destroy random pieces of property is entertaining. Not as much fun as doing it myself, but it did the job. Nami picked both Luffy and Zoro up off of the ground by their collars, don't you two idiots realize that if Naruto-kun wasn't here I might have ended up losing one billion belly. Bibi looked over at them all in confusion, what are you talking about and why are you helping me? Oh that's right, Nami said as she held Zoro and Luffy back from fighting even more as they woke up, we have to talk about this, how about some negotiations? She eventually got a tick mark on her head and slammed Zoro and Luffy into the ground, stop fighting you morons. Naruto scratched his head, right, well while you two do that, I'm going to make sure my people are ready to clear out of here on cue. I'm going to get Noji-chan from the tavern. With that, Naruto grabbed the unconscious Miss Valentine and shunshined away. What's up Mon Capitan? Soren asked, leaning against the mast as Naruto appeared in a swirl of leaves aboard the ship carrying Nojiko and Miss Valentine, you done blowing up half of the town yet or do you want to turn the other side to rubble too? Naruto grinned cheekily at Soren, are you even sober yet? Soren looked away, yes. Then let go of the mast then and take this chick off of my hands. Naruto started before he saw Soren somewhat sway against his point of balance, never mind, he stated with a sweat drop, you would probably drop her over the edge and we don't really need to lose a prisoner right now. A shrug from the bald bounty hunter was his response, fair enough. Is she one of those Baroque works people? A nod was his response, you really seem to like making a habit of capturing people that you beat. Naruto walked inside with a smile on his face, hey I killed the other guy, what can I say? Tourists like me enjoy souvenirs. Soren let out a sigh as he lay down on the deck, whatever. Take them inside and cop another feel on Nojiko like I know you're going to do. I'll be here drifting in and out of consciousness. If I really do black out though, F me over when you come back up. Will do. Naruto said as he left Soren alone on deck. What the? Naruto said after a moment of silence throughout the boat. Soren grunted loudly to let him know he was listening, Soren what is with all of the barrels in the storeroom? I did not put this crap in here. He said as he stomped back up to the acid spitting man. Soren groaned as Naruto's footsteps thudded off of the wood, please stop stepping so hard. My head is killing me. The barrels are for me. Apparently the chefs on this island keep me stockpiles of lemon juice and who am I to not take advantage of such a hoard? Naruto looked at him oddly, why in the blue would you need 35 barrels of lemon juice? He then stopped thinking for a second, wait, did they have ramen? Soren raised an eyebrow, what is ramen? Naruto sighed and ran his hand through his hair, never mind, but why did you need that much lemon juice? As a matter of fact why do you need lemon juice, period? Soren sat up, I use lemon juice to keep up the acidity of my attacks. If I don't have any acid in my bodily liquids then my devil fruit powers are not as strong, bordering on ineffective. To keep up with the amount of acids I use I need to have a lot of fluids in my system as well as a high acid ratio. Keeping me in that water for as long as you did made me basically useless for the time being. These powers obtained from the Akuma no Mi sometimes seemed to be more trouble than they were worth. Most of the powers that Naruto had seen up to this point had glaring weaknesses and even when there weren't weaknesses, as long as Naruto had a body of water handy he could deal with pretty much anything that could be thrown at him. At that moment he saw a boat floating away from the cove, but something about it was off, hold that thought for a moment Soren. Naruto then shunshined off of the boat, leaving Soren there alone. Confused as to what Naruto's problem was at first, he shrugged and closed his eyes to go back to sleep before a MIV explosion rocked the nearby area. Soren jumped up and looked over the side of the boat where he saw the flaming wreckage of the ship Naruto had been staring at, what the? 
using a substitute princess, what a stupid idea, or the words that came from a woman watching from a concealed rocky area overlooking the shore. She had shoulder-length black hair, and brown eyes. She wore a purple top that showed much of her cleavage, with a mini skirt to match. Over the top of that she had an open white fur-lined coat and a white cowboy hat on the top of her head. I don't know, it seemed like a pretty good idea to me. She turned to see Naruto holding an agarum dressed in drag to resemble Bibi, although the execution was horrifically flawed. If they wanted a decoy they should have just asked me. Naruto dropped Agarum and transformed into an exact copy of Bibi before turning back to himself in a puff of smoke. Yep, after your little fireworks show they should be hustling to get out of here as we speak. It's a shame, she would have been safer with me. Oh well, Luffy's crew is good enough to get her to Alabasta. He then leered at the mysterious woman with a smirk. Since that's obviously where they're going, you wouldn't be a deer and tell me where that would be would you? The woman returned his smirk. No I can't say that I can. Are you sure that you should be making an enemy out of Baroque works? That doesn't seem like the best idea to me. I'm not really the idea kind of guy. I'm the kick your and eat you out of house and home before smiling about it kind of guy. Naruto said in response, besides, now I'm interested in this whole thing. I haven't taken down an entire criminal organization in ages, and I'm an old hand at it you see. May I get the name of the beautiful lady that I may very well soon be locked in Mortal Kombat with. I shouldn't tell you, but I don't really care. My name is Nico Robin. She said, turning to leave, you're quite the charmer aren't you? You do know that I'm at least seven years your senior, don't you? Naruto chuckled, I seriously doubt that. Trust me, if there's anyone robbing the cradle here, it's definitely me. He picked Agarum back up and tossed him over his shoulder, well it was nice meeting you Robin Chan. Give the Strafuts my best, tell them I'll be seeing them when they get to Alabasta, and tell your boss that I'm coming for his, and he'll yearly know when, because right around the time I show up, everything will start to go to for him. Hopefully a pretty thing like you won't get caught in the crossfire of my anarchy. Before Naruto could make the hand seals to utilize Shunshin no Jutsu, he felt a hand from the nearby cliff wall grab his shoulder, well that's interesting. Robin simply smiled at him, if I'm going to warn my boss I should at least know the name of the man that's going to be a hem, coming for his, as you so bluntly put it. Naruto turned around fully, Uzumaki Naruto. I would ask you for your boss's name in return, but I neither care nor think that it will be important for me to know in the first place because I truly doubt he's a wow girl like you, and if he isn't then I don't really care since I'll probably be breaking my foot off in his very soon. Naruto removed the hand from his shoulder, until next time Ms. Nico Robin. Do you have a code name like all of the others I've met so far? Robin giggled, Miss All Sunday. I see. Naruto said, well. I will see you in Alabasta chances or miss all Sunday. With that he disappeared in a whirlwind of leaves. Yeah. Soren yelled as Johnny and Yosaku came back aboard the ship carrying two more barrels each, just set those down in the storeroom with the rest. Wait. He said, before running up to Yosaku and relieving him of one of the barrels, I'll take that one myself. I'm thirsty. Johnny glared at Soren, and you're sure Naruto Aniki said that he needed all of these on board. Yeah sure, let's go with that. Soren shrugged as he sunk a glowing finger into the top of the barrel before turning it up and drinking it on the spot. The return of their captain was signified with the sudden swirling leaves and wind. Naruto looked at Soren chugging down an entire barrel with a twitching eyebrow, I don't even know what to say about that, so I'm not going to even comment on it. Soren finished drinking his fill and set the barrel down at his side, hey is that the Mr. 8 guy? Come on Uzumaki. At least the last one you caught was a wow girl. What the do we need him for? And he's in drag. That just screams wrong signals on all fronts. Naruto had a tick mark on his head, because we don't know how to get to Alabasta Psychopath. This guy is from there, and that's where the Baroque works are, therefore we need him to get there for the time being. Yosaku and Johnny came from inside of the ship, Naruto and Iki. Johnny said, that girl in the yellow is waking up, what do we do? Naruto turned to Soren, make sure everything is ready to go, we aren't staying here any longer than we have to. Soren nodded, what about this guy? Naruto rolled his neck as he walked inside, who cares? He'll wake up when he wakes up. Don't come into the storeroom until I say so okay. He got unanimous nods from all of the men on board. 
I wonder what he's going to go do in the storeroom. Yosaku asked. Soren rolled his eyes, your buddy just said the girl was waking up and that's where he placed her. What do you think he's going to go and do? Miss Valentine opened her eyes, unable to see straight right away due to being dropped on her head not too long ago. Man, Soren just had to go overboard with the ing lemon juice didn't he? Although if I were him and it was ramen I probably would have done the same thing. Sniff ramen, you and I will be reunited one day soon, I swear it, no matter where I have to search. She focused her vision to see the same man that had beaten her sitting on a barrel, looking right at her, you woke up fast. I guess you have some reason to call yourself elite in your little group. Miss Valentine glared at him from her position tied up on the ground. Naruto shook his head, you can try to use your devil fruit power to break out, but I have no clue what the it will actually do for you except sink my ship, and you have no way out if that does happen. So it looks to me that you're stuck with me for the time being. She looked down, what do you want with me? Naruto got off of the barrel and sat cross-legged in front of her, that's the easy thing. I want every little thing that you can tell me about Baroque works. I want to help you, and I don't really want to hurt you, because I really dislike hurting women, but I'm going to need a reason not to do so. Please. He sighed as she turned her head away. Listen up, I don't know about Soren, but I am fully capable of making you completely and utterly miserable without causing you true physical harm, so I won't really be hurting you, but you'll feel like you're dying by the time I'm done. I can stay down here and torture you for as long as I need to in order to get something out of you. I don't want to but I can. Miss Valentine looked at him, what kind of monster are you? You beat us without even breaking a sweat. Naruto frowned, you'd be surprised if I told you that I'm actually somewhat used to being called that, but you're simply not on my level. You don't have the experience or the raw power necessary to defeat me. At this rate I'm wondering if anyone ever will, but I'm not one to look a gift horse like this in the mouth. So let's start with something simple, what's your name? Miss Valentine locked eyes with him somewhat defiantly, Miss Valentine. Naruto smiled and chuckled at that, cute. I meant your real name, but if you don't want to tell me your real name that's okay with me. Your real name actually has nothing to do with me or what I really want to know if that's how you want to do it. Miss Valentine smirked, you're really bad at this interrogation thing, you know that. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, maybe. He then started leaking killing intent as he sharpened his eyes on her, but I'm not bad at the torture part one can hear you of that. He then eased off of the malice as he saw her start to shake somewhat, do you know your own partner almost killed you during the fight after I knocked you out? When I put you on your back to rest easier he tried to blow me up with you right there. She was well aware how Mr. Five usually approached his work, without much care for the collateral damage he caused, that was one of the major reasons she used her parasol to hover above the battlefield during their fights, so that she wouldn't be caught in any crossfire. He said that as long as he completed his mission, your life was expendable. Naruto tilted her chin up to look at him, why work for people like that? Why would you protect them when one of the lower guys said that your life was inconsequential? I can only imagine what your boss is like. Naruto sighed and stood up, I can't let you go. Not now like this, but I will let you walk about. He formed two cage bunchen and set them to the process of untying her. Why? She asked, why would you let me go around by myself on your ship, what if I sabotage things here? Naruto grinned at her, because anything these guys see will go back to me. If you do something I'll know immediately, and if the other remaining one isn't enough to stop you, I'm pretty sure that I can. He then proceeded to leave. Wait. She yelled before he could get out. Naruto poked his head back in, yes. Miss Valentine rubbed her wrists while the cage bunch and guards stood around her, what happened to Mr. Five? Naruto blinked, oh, he's dead. I killed him after he tried killing you. Trying to kill me is one thing, I'm used to it. But killing your comrades, or not caring for their well-being. Well I guess I'm old school like that in the way that I can't stand people like that. It's a pet peeve of mine. Miss Valentine watched Naruto leave and looked between his cage bunch and that he had left with her. How can a guy move between killer and clown so fast? Who is this man? The next day open seas. Soren stared at Naruto manning the helm with a tick mark on his head, so I have to comment on something. That girl isn't tied to the front of the ship in the water like I was when you put me on this ship. Nope. Naruto mentioned. 
he really needed to know which way Alabasta was, or at least needed Nojiko to wake up so that he could get a general direction. His eye twitched when Soren jumped and landed standing on top of the wheel, yes Soren. Soren looked down from where he was standing with a manic grin on his face, so what's the difference between me and her? We both tried to kill you, you ended up saving us both anyway, and now we're on your ship without ever agreeing to it. Naruto looked up at him with a smirk, yeah, but she's wow. You my friend are not of the female species, thus I do not feel the need to treat you well. You're a tough guy aren't you? You're an. Soren grumbled as he jumped off of the wheel and ran up the side of the mast to get in the crow's nest. Hey. Naruto yelled up at him, how the did you do that? I'm the only guy around here that does stuff like that. Soren grinned down at him, I can do a lot of things like this. I wasn't a bounty hunter I just fought the bounties, I was actually a thief to make my living. I've got tons of moves like that. Naruto kept yelling up at him, get your down here and get to work you lazy motherer. You are not going to sleep up there, that's my job, and if I'm down here you are sure is not getting out of working. Go yourself. Soren yelled as he sat down, I'm not on your ink crew. As far as I'm concerned I'm a hostage. And who are you calling me lazy? This is the most captainy I've seen you act since I've been here. Listen up you acid spitting sob. If you want me to keep your god lemon juice you're going to. How Naruto ducked a gunswow that was aimed at his head, it noji chan I'm chewing Soren out. That almost took my head off. Well then you would know how I feel right now, she said as she ambled out onto the deck holding her head, ah, what did I drink last night? I feel like the walking dead right now. Naruto came up to her, you were so smashed last night noji chan, it was amazing. I see why you don't like the idea of drinking if that's how you get. Do you remember anything from last night? Nojiko groaned and leaned against Naruto holding her head, don't make me remember stuff Naruto-kun, let's see. Nami got me started, then I kept going and going. Then I think I sat in your lap or something and then we. He eyes widened as she looked up at Naruto's smiling face. Yep. Naruto said once he saw the look on her face, so you do remember. I actually thought you would forget it, and I was going to let you. But apparently you have some kind of drunk recollection ability or something. He put a finger over her when she opened her mouth to speak, you don't have to say anything about it right now. Let it settle in your sober mind what you said and we can talk about it later, okay. Go lay back down. Naruto smiled at her as he watched her stumble once and turn back to look at him with a blush before going back inside. He then turned to Johnny and Yosaku, what are you two doing right now? Johnny stood in his quick draw stance, simply standing there, everybody with a sword has their own moves. We're trying to come up with our own now that we have these awesome swords Naruto and Iki. Speaking of training, hit me. Naruto made a half tiger seal and added more weight to Johnny's bands, well there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't forget to keep sparring to get your own style down better. Basics can kill you no. He looked over at Yosaku who was watching Johnny, so what about Mr. Curly? Yosaku turned to Naruto, we dropped him inside and just let him be an Iki. Why did you bring him? Naruto shrugged, it was too late to catch the Strafuts and dump him with them, and when we get to Alabasta he should be a good help to get us to where we need to go. And where do we need to go? Soren yelled down from the crow's nest. Naruto grinned up at him, to destroy Baroque works. Come on, it should be pretty fun. Johnny and Yosaku looked at one another before looking back to Naruto when Johnny spoke, are we really going to go and do this Naruto and Iki? This is a major deal, taking on these people is going to be a big deal. Are you sure we can do it? Naruto looked at them and grinned, well now that you mention it, I'm not sure how you two are going to do. So just in case, Naruto made another half tiger seal as Johnny and Yosaku's weights float again before slamming them hard onto the ground, enjoy learning how to walk again. It Naruto and Iki. At the sound of that shout, Naruto's grin turned absolutely maniacal, I can always bring out Samahata and we can make you run before you can walk so to speak, and by run I mean stab cut slash all of the above sword like actions. Johnny and Yosaku shakily pulled themselves to their feet and began stomping around the deck lest Naruto turn that monstrous sword of his on them when they can't even fight back. As this happened there was a frantic series of steps coming from inside before a crack noise as Nojiko walked outside, still holding her head, but looking back inside in a confused manner with her flintlock pistol in hand, 
why is the guy from Whiskey Peak running around the common area like a chicken with its head cut off? Why is he here? Why did I have to pistol whip him to get him to shut the up about some princess or something? Naruto proceeded to answer all of her questions in order. He's here because I brought him here. He was about to be blown to bits and I saved him. And he's worried about the princess of his home country of Alabasta who is currently with your sister's crew as they were both double agents in a criminal organization that tried to kill us while you were pet out last night. I don't know why you pistol whipped him though, but for some reason the thought of you pistol whipping anyone is sexy. He looked over at Johnny and Yosaku, I am a depraved human being aren't I? Nojiko stared at Naruto, momentarily taking in all of the information he had just given before she sighed and rubbed her temple, okay then. Well he's inside unconscious again and bleeding on the floor. I'm not cleaning that by the way. Naruto waved it off, clean. We don't clean around here Noji-chan. That's what these clowns are for. Johnny, Yosaku. Go clean the god common room. I want to see that floor mothering sparkle. Hop to it. The aforementioned men shakily stomped their way inside to get to work as Miss Valentine with her cage bunch and escorts came outside, her characteristic smile not in place since she had awoken on the ship, I have two questions. 1. Why is Mr. 8, Air, Agarum, bleeding on the floor inside dressed in drag? 2. That I never got to ask from last night, what's with all of the lemon juice in the storeroom? Nojiko looked at the blonde woman that had just emerged, flanked by two of Naruto's copies, I might have missed this in ping, but who is this and why is she here? Naruto pointed at her, this is Miss Valentine, one of the people that tried to kill us while you were inebriated last night. And to answer your question dear, Noji-chan here cracked him on his curly dome with her pistol because he was acting the. Nojiko looked between Naruto and Miss Valentine, if she attacked you then why isn't she dead? Naruto scoffed, I don't kill people just for attacking me, that's counterproductive. When you see a child try to play with matches you don't let them keep doing it, you smack their hand and tell them fire will kill them and destroy everything around them. Well then why is she out and about and not tied to the front of the ship like Soren was? Nojiko asked, I know, that's what I said, Soren yelled down from the crow's nest. Naruto smirked, I don't like tormenting women too much. It's not really my thing. He turned to his cage bunchen, has she been acting shifty or anything since I let her go? One of his clones shook his head, no boss. She hasn't even been looking around. Probably because she would think that we would think she was looking for a weak spot on the ship or something. She's actually been going out of her way to not provoke one of us to dispel and come get you. Princess Vivi. Agaram ran from inside to the deck with blood caking the side of his face before seeing Naruto and grabbing the collar of his sage jacket, where is the princess? Where am I? What have you done with her? Naruto proceeded to free himself and backhand slap Agaram, knocking him to ground, I can see why you pistol whipped him Noji-chan, you'd think the first thing he'd do after waking up would be to find some guy clothes. Nojiko pouted, he almost ruined my shirt, grabbing me like that, it could have ripped. Naruto walked over and comfortingly put an arm around her shoulder, there, there. He didn't know that I'm the only one that can rip your clothes off Noji-chan. He then dodged a point-blank gunswow from said girl, wow, your aim s when you're hungover. I'm right here. Nojiko glared as Naruto walked over to Agaram and kicked him in the side, get up so I can explain what's happening. Agaram immediately swow to his feet only refraining from grabbing Naruto again when the blonde gave him a glare promising pain if he tried to do so. Naruto nodded in satisfaction, okay, Luffy's crew has the princess and they left before us. Now we plan on heading to Alabasta ourselves, but we don't really know how to get there, so what do you say we do? Agaram narrowed his eyes at Naruto, why do you care about what's going on in Alabasta? Naruto turned and walked towards the helm motioning for Nojiko to follow with the log pose, honestly I kind of don't, but there are two reasons that I'm going to get involved. Neither of which you are going to be hearing about from me anytime soon. You can either help us, and I can ease the strafuts in getting your princess to where she needs to go when we cross up again or you can not tell me, and I can go about my merry way and drop you at the next island we stop at. Either way I get to move on to doing something interesting so it really doesn't matter to me. Luffy and his people should be more than enough to deal with it anyway, but shouldn't you want to be there with the most powerful allies you can find to fight with you? 
Agaram watched his back as Naruto manned the helm and starting speaking with Nojiko about where the log pose was saying to head to next. Excuse me. He called out, getting Nojiko to turn around to face him. Naruto did as well, only much slower and with a grin on his face, yes. He drawled out. Agaram sighed, as much as I've hated having to deal with ruffians like yourselves for as long as I have, it seems I still have a need for a man such as yourself. That's what she said. Naruto smirked, thank you Soren. And the fact that he's dressed in drag makes that extra creepy as well. Agaram glared at the gleeful blonde, be that as it may, you have proven yourself to be quite capable of easily dispatching crocodiles elites. He then paled along with Miss Valentine after realizing what he had said. Naruto raised an eyebrow, so is that the guy running the whole show's name. Crocodile. Holy. Soren yelled down from the crow's nest with an excited grin on his face, Crocodile. We're going to go kick crocodiles. That's awesome. Miss Valentine looked at Agaram rather fearfully, you aren't supposed to say his name, ever. No one is supposed to know anyone else's name. I don't care if you're marked for death, don't drag me down with you. Naruto raised an eyebrow, you were going to kill him anyway, are you telling me you're still going to do it? There's no way I'm letting you do that after I went through all of the trouble of thwarting the attempt to blow up his boat. What? Miss Valentine asked, who tried to blow his boat up? I thought you killed Mr. Five. I did. Naruto admitted, but there was this lady that could make her hands and stuff come out of any surface. She tried to blow up his boat and I got him out beforehand before I confronted her. Miss Valentine's eyes widened, Miss All Sunday. Naruto snapped his fingers and pointed at her, there you go. That was her code name, but she told me her real name was Nico Robin because she didn't care about keeping it from me for some reason. Attractive lady too. What? Soren yelled down from the higher position. No way. You mean we're going to go fight Sir Crocodile of the Shichibukai and, Devil Child, Nico Robin. Being on this ship is awesome. That's a combined bounty of 160 million belly. I know they're tough for that kind of bounty. Naruto looked up at the bald young man, why do you want to fight these people so much anyway? You seem way too happy to be heading into battle. Soren chuckled, are you kidding me? If I can beat Crocodile that will just put me one step closer to knowing I'm ready to take out my true target. That and those Shichibukai in general really piss me off. The concept is complete bull. Miss Valentine recoiled, don't tell me her name. She told you because she was going to mark you for death anyway after what you did, and now you've marked me too. I not only failed my mission, but even if I somehow carried it up from here with you watching me like a hawk you told me the top two members of Baroque Works real names. Nojiko looked at the distraught woman strangely, how in the would they know that those things even happened? It's not like anyone here is actually going to tell them that you failed, or that you even know the things that you shouldn't. Miss Valentine sighed and collapsed against the mast, sliding down to the deck, they'll find out. They always find out everything. You don't understand, I wouldn't be surprised if they know right now. Uzumaki. Soren yelled from the crow's nest, look over there. He pointed up in the sky at something hovering around the ship. Naruto squinted and shielded his eyes with his hand so he could look up, what the is that? Is that a vulture? What the is a vulture doing in the middle of the ocean? Miss Valentine and Agaram looked up with horrified looks on their faces, no. Stop them now. Stop who? Nojiko asked, the vulture. Agaram ran up to Naruto, that's not just a vulture that's Miss Friday and Mr. Thirteen, the unluckies. Naruto nodded, okay so they work for Crocodile. What did they do? Because I fail to see how a vulture can do anything to me whatsoever. Miss Valentine looked up in fear, they have our faces and are going to take them back to Crocodile. I really am dead now. Naruto, Ed in thought, Nojiko-chan, go get your rifle. Let's see how good you're getting. Nojiko looked up and back towards Naruto before shrugging and going inside to get her gun. Naruto leaned against the mast next to Miss Valentine, tapping her on the shoulder to get her to look at him, if I can guarantee your safety you're going to help us against Crocodile, understood. Or I can just give you the same ultimatum I gave Agaram and can drop you at the next island to let you fend for yourself. Miss Valentine wasn't sure. Naruto was strong, way stronger than her and Mr. Five apparently and he seemingly had no problems with facing down Crocodile, but everyone else around him did not exactly inspire confidence and she wasn't sure that one man, no matter how strong, could do it all himself. 
Nojiko came back out with her rifle in hand. Okay Naruto-kun, what do you need me to do? Naruto pointed up at the vulture in the sky. I have given our new friend Mr. Crocodile enough liberties already by telling his second in command that I'm coming for him. He doesn't really need to know any more about us, or that I didn't kill Miss Valentine, so I need you to shoot that vulture and whatever is riding on the back of it down. Nojiko loaded the rifle and took aim through the crosshairs before lowering the gun, so cute. It's an otter with sungles riding on the vulture. Naruto face faulted and jumped back up. Noji-chan that thing is the enemy. Shoot them down already. Nojiko held out the rifle to Naruto. Naruto-kun I'm not shooting that poor little otter or that vulture down. That's just animal cruelty. Johnny and Yosaku came back outside carrying a bucket and a mop and looked up along with everyone else. Yosaku dumped the bucket out over the side while Johnny looked at Mr. 13 and Miss Friday, his sungles allowing him a better look than everyone else could get. Why is that otter biting my sungle style, and why does a vulture have machine guns strapped to its back? Of course it does, Naruto sweet dropped before pulling Miss Valentine and Agarum up along with Soren jumping down to get everyone else, grabbing everyone to drag them inside while the deck was riddled with gunfire. Naruto looked outside after the first pee to see that they were still circling above, okay here's the plan. Noji-chan is going to go out there and shoot them, and the rest of us are going to stay here and watch her do it. Nojiko snapped at Naruto, why the do I have to do it? Naruto gave her a dry look, they have guns, you have guns, and if you had just swow them when I told you to we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. Now go kick their ass and get it over with. Nojiko pointed outside, they have machine guns. How the am I going to beat that? Naruto rolled his eyes, you have all of that cover on deck between the mast and the training dummies set up all over the place, and I've been throwing deadly objects at you for going on two weeks now and you're still alive with no permanent scarring. I think you can beat a vulture and an otter in a fight. Nojiko looked at the rifle in her hand and sighed before strapping it onto her back as she walked off deeper into the ship, I'm getting more pistols and ammo, Naruto grinned, at a girl. Go kick their ass. Naruto noticed everyone else looking at him strangely, what? Everyone else on the ship has fought to this point except her. I need to know if she can handle herself. She'll be fine, I'll step in if she looks like she's going to lose. Agaram yelled at him, then why don't you go out there and fight them yourself? Naruto rolled his eyes, who am I, your parents? No. At some point I'm not going to always be around, I'm not a superhero. They need to be able to fight and win on their own. Noji-chan is in the same boat as Johnny and Yosaku at this point. She needs to show me that she's actually learning how to fight. The other two are coming along nicely, and I believe Soren's good enough to beat just about anyone we run into, Soren beamed with pride, except for me of course. He visibly deflated at that. Aniki why are you so good? Yosaku asked, we never see you train, ever, and yet you stomp mud holes in everybody you fight. Naruto looked over at his swordsman crewmate, just because you don't see me train doesn't mean that I don't. You've seen my attacks, do you really think I can train the way I need to with the moves I use? Everything I use have already mastered, and if I haven't I have my own way of training that doesn't put all of your very existences in mortal peril. Nojiko returned to the common room with her rifle on her back and a belt around her waist with four pistols, do I really have to do this Naruto-kun? I still can't hit you yet, are you sure I'm ready to fight anyone? Naruto nodded, yes Noji-chan. You're going to do just fine, I know it. Remember, shoot to kill. Incapacitation is nice, but it is not a priority when you use guns. Now show me what you've got. Nojiko sighed before stealing her features and heading outside, her eyes locked up above at Miss Friday circling overhead once more. Nojiko pulled the rifle from her back and took aim. Before she could get a lock however, Miss Friday saw her with the gun and took evasive action while Mr. 13 prepared the guns on her back to fire. Nojiko heard the guns readying themselves and whimpered before taking cover behind the mast as the deck was altered with bullets from above. Nojiko placed her rifle back on her back and drew a pistol, I'm going to kick Naruto kuns when I get out of this. Man, Naruto said as he watched from inside, Noji chan's going to kick my when she gets out of this. Miss Valentine watched from over his shoulder, you should get her back in here and come up with an actual plan for this. Naruto scoffed, it's a vulture and an otter. Could I knock them out of the sky with my eyes closed? 
Yes, but if I did that then no one else here would ever learn anything. Nojiko can beat a pair of animals. She's a much better swow than she thinks she is and she's the only one of us that has never fought before. Agaram wasn't convinced. I know I could never hit them with my own attack. Are you sure she can? Naruto gave him a dry look. You shoot guns from your hair and from a trumpet and try to overwhelm people up close with firepower. Noji-chan actually aims. And she's actually really good at anticipating targets. She hasn't hit me yet because I'm awesome. She can hit any of you I guarantee it because I move a little faster than Johnny and Yosaku when we train and I'm way more agile. The second that those things give her an opening the fight is over. Johnny, Yosaku, you've seen the bullseyes haven't you? The free swinging ones I set up for her. Yosaku nodded, I've seen them when they're not in use on the ground. I only see a few holes around the bullseye, not much anywhere else. Are you sure she's good? Naruto grinned, that's because all she hits these days is the bullseye. I have to keep replacing them or else they would have gaping holes in the middle. Um, Vulture and Otter. Nojiko asked as she dashed across the deck before jumping behind one of Naruto's set up human shaped targets, could you stop shooting at me and go away? I don't want to have to shoot you. What Naruto kun doesn't know won't hurt him. I heard that Nojiko. Shoot them down, because if I have to come out there you don't want to know what I'll do to them. I could always just send Sorin out there to melt them too you know. Nojiko sweet dropped, never mind then. This seems like the lesser of two, or in this case three, evils. Sorry about this, but a gunswow wound would have to be considerably better than being melted or whatever horrible thing Naruto-kun would do to you to prove his point. I'll try not to kill you. Nojiko set all of her pistols out on the ground before she finally popped up from the target she had been hiding behind with her rifle set on top of it to help her take aim. Mr. 13 saw the rifle in her hands and sent Miss Friday down again for another attack, forcing Nojiko to take cover again, okay, this is starting to get annoying. She looked around as every time she put her head up the unluckies were all over her with gunfire. As she looked about for her aerial targets before they could open fire on her again she saw that the sail was furled up for some reason, Naruto kun you idiot. Naruto kun you idiot. Naruto turned around to see everyone staring at him, what? I don't know. I have no idea what I did to piss her off this time, honestly. Nojiko grumbled as Mr. 13 and Miss Friday kept making peas at her from above, stupid cute blonde moron. Who the keeps the sail up in open water? She shrugged to herself as she sighed and prepared to pop back up, might as well kill two birds with one stone, air, so to speak. Nojiko took aim with her rifle once more and swow at the metal piece keeping the sail held up top and let it drop down, just in time for Miss Friday to attempt another head-on attack at her that ended up with her bouncing off of it and falling into the water. Nojiko giggled, well now, that was easy enough wasn't it? Noji-chan. Naruto yelled as everyone came from inside, that was certainly unconventional. Well done. Nojiko smiled as she saw him coming over, Naruto-kun. Before she cracked over the head with one of her pistols, why was the sail rolled up you idiot? Naruto held his head, we didn't know where we were supposed to be going remember? Why would I have us aimlessly set off in one direction just to end up with us turning around when we got our bearings? Nojiko placed her hands on her hips, we could have just stayed in Whiskey Peak for the time being until I woke up. Johnny pointed his thumb at Miss Valentine, with what we ended up doing while you were asleep that really wasn't the best idea. Are those things dead? He finished trying to look back over the boat at Mr. 13 and Miss Friday, who they were moving away from pretty quickly. Naruto shrugged, I don't care. Noji-chan beat them and that's all that matters right now. You don't always have to win straight up and in the most straightforward way. A win is a win and that's all that really matters in a fight. Naruto then turned to Agarum, does that prove my point? Agarum nodded, I guess it proves that you keep company good enough to at the very least support you. Very well. I wish to enlist your services as privateers for the kingdom of Alabasta. Naruto raised an eyebrow, how much money are we talking here? Agarum sighed. You may discuss that with the king when we arrive. He didn't really want to be the one to barter with Naruto, especially after Nami tried to hit him up for one billion belly the other day. Naruto made an understanding gesture, fair enough I guess. And Miss Valentine, what about you? 
Miss Valentine looked between everyone on board before finally speaking. All right, it's either go with you and hope you can beat Crocodile before he kills all of you and me, or go on my own and have Crocodile send people to hunt me down and kill me. I guess I'm going with you then. She finished, actually getting enough spark back in her to laugh a little bit at the end. Naruto clapped his hands together, well that's settled. Now Noji-chan, log pose. Hopefully we can get bearings on Alabasta quickly. That won't be necessary. Agarum cut in, reaching into his pocket in order to pull something out, I have an eternal pose set for Alabasta. It has coordinates that can take us straight there instead of gallivanting from island to island. Naruto took it from his hands, well isn't that absurdly convenient. But dude, we're going to beat the Strafuts there by a ton if we just head straight there. Are you planning on heading in to fix the situation yourself or are you going to wait for Princess Vivi? Think on it. Nojiko held the eternal pose against her log pose, well they're facing the same general direction anyway, so I think we'll end up hitting the next island that we locked onto before we end up in Alabasta anyway. Naruto grinned, sweet. Now let's get to where we're going so I can ask that super wow princess to dance for me again. Nojiko glared at Naruto, what was that Naruto-kun? Naruto turned to look at her, if you want to dance for me Noji-chan feel free, you've got an audience in me. Bang. Love you too Noji-chan. Chapter 9. The Scenic Route, Why Are We Not Following My Eternal Pose to Alabasta? Agarum asked angrily as Naruto did his best to keep the irritation off of his face, we need to protect the princess. Naruto let out a sigh from his seat in the common room, and I'm telling you that she'll be fine with the strafuts. Besides, they're not getting there directly either, they have to do it the hard way in island hop. Aside from the fact that we can go straight there anytime we want our ship is faster than theirs. Agarum didn't know what his point was, then why don't we go straight there? Naruto gave him an exasperated look, because I don't want to. Albeit if I'm just going to be waiting around for them to show up, and we have to go to where Noji-chan's log pose is telling us to go at some point eventually, so why not kill some time and get this island logged? We'll still beat them to Alabasta since we're still traveling in the same general direction. The sound of doors slamming in the kitchen got Naruto's attention, forcing him to get up to see what the matter was. Naruto walked in to find Miss Valentine frowning as she checked through the cabinets, Miss Valentine. What's the matter, are you alright? She looked at Naruto, pausing from her search through the kitchen, actually there's something wrong here. What the do you all eat on this ship? The majority of what I've found are canned rations, mostly of the meat variety, and instant food. Bletch. The most edible thing I've found are a box of crackers that I'm certain are eaten in conjunction with the canned meat. Naruto shrugged. None of us can really cook, and my favorite food apparently doesn't exist anywhere otherwise this place would be full of it. He finished in a dark voice before lightening back up, do you really have that much of a problem with that? Miss Valentine placed her hands on her hips, I do. How have you been living for so long off of this crap you have? And you have a woman on board as well. How has she been eating this the entire time? And she hasn't complained once about it. Naruto blinked, she was the one that brought it on board. Come to think of it, Noji-chan never eats with us, ever. But she does eat, I know she does, otherwise I would have noticed it and she would have been dead by now. I never really put much thought into it because as long as what I'm eating isn't ramen or anything equally as great I don't care about the things around me when I eat. On cue, Nojiko walked into the room, what's everyone doing in here? Miss Valentine walked up to her and looked her over, you seem to be very well fed. Naruto got a shiver down his back and backed away as Nojiko got a tick mark on her head, what the is that supposed to mean? Miss Valentine noticed the way her words could have been taken and laughed for a moment, no, not like that. I mean, you don't seriously eat the stuff that I found in the cabinets do you? Nojiko scoffed, of course I don't. That stuff would kill me. The only ones that can stomach that crap are the blonde juggernaut here and the cast iron stomach brothers asleep in their room. The only reason Soren never complained is because before this he was strapped to the front of the ship for almost a week. I'm sure any food he ended up getting in that situation was a welcome reprieve. Naruto gave her a dry look, I didn't buy this stuff Noji-chan you did. So what, pray tell, have you been eating all of this time, since all of the stuff in the cabinets apparently grosses you out? Nojiko covered her mouth, um, actually just ignore all of that stuff about what I just said. 
I'm just a slightly picky eater. Miss Valentine smiled and held up a small tin of unmarked food, if this was what I had to choose from to eat on this ship then I would be picky too. She walked over to Nojiko and wrapped an arm around her shoulders, why don't you just show me how exactly you've been surviving for all of this time while the men have all been eating like prisoners. The two walked off deeper into the ship, probably to Nojiko's quarters. Naruto stared in disbelief where Nojiko had been standing, son of A, Noji-chan's been holding out on me. A grin slowly crossed his face, I knew I was rubbing off on her. I'm so proud. Agarum took note of something, if you're in here as is everyone else, then who is keeping the ship on course? Naruto shrugged, my cage bunchen of course. It's like I'm working without even having to work, it's beautiful. Whoever said being a captain was hard obviously never had fully competent copies of themselves at the ready. Agarum frowned visibly at the remark about his cage bunchen, what manner of akuma no mi is that? I've never heard of a devil fruit that gave one the power of replication. Naruto sat back down in the common room, that's because it's not a power from any devil fruit. That's all me, I'm just special like that. You don't need a devil fruit to be strong, trust me. The only person on my crew that even has any devil fruit powers is Soren. Nojiko, Yosaku, and Johnny are a work in progress, but they're definitely getting there as far as I'm concerned. This brought about more questions from Agarum about just who he had enlisted to east him, what kind of monster can do the things he is capable of without any eye stance from the fruits. Naruto leaned back and tried to get some shut eye only to be grabbed by the back collar of his sage coat by Miss Valentine, why so forceful? And man, you're kind of strong aren't you? That's deceptive. She had a smile on her face as she turned him around like a dog grabbed by the scruff of its neck, when we stop at the next island you're giving me money to go get real food for this tub. Nojiko already gave me the okay to tell you to do it. She told me how much you have on you as well, I'm sparing no expense for real food. Naruto gave her a deadpan look, and why can't you just swipe food from the stash that Nojiko obviously has in her room. Personally I can eat this until the sun freezes over and the sky falls down, and nobody else here is complaining. Nojiko walked in behind Miss Valentine with a stern look on her face, mostly it's because I don't really have enough for the two of us to last for much longer. But she brought up a pretty interesting point. Miss Valentine dropped Naruto back in his seat and walked around, you guys aren't getting any nutrition at all from the stuff you're eating. I'm surprised none of you have rickets or something yet. Naruto made an uncaring noise, I can't get sick and I can't catch diseases. I'm too awesome to fall ill to anything. But I see your point though. I need my pack mule's air, Johnny and Yosaku in top condition so that I don't have to do the menial chores around here, one of them already caught scurvy once. And they're too stupid to see that the they eat is not going to help them keep from catching it again. Naruto looked out at the two women standing in front of him, fine. Buy some stuff that's actually edible for those with more than a handful of brain cells. But still, none of us can cook, so I don't know what you could possibly get that we can make. Miss Valentine laughed, well then you're lucky I'm here. Nojiko looked at her strangely, you can actually cook. Miss Valentine posed proudly, well I specialize in making chocolate things, but I'm not too bad at making other things too. Naruto pointed at her, that's way more than anyone else can say, that's for sure. If you're sure you want to give it a swell then go for it. It obviously can't be any worse than the crap everyone's been eating. Nojiko shook her head at Naruto, you said that you didn't notice that the food was bad. No I didn't. Naruto denied, I said I didn't care. I knew what I was eating was one step above garbage but I didn't care, it didn't bother me. Agarum held up an open can of potted meat and smelled it before gagging and tossing it placing it aside, you are the most insane man on the face of the planet. Naruto shrugged, I prefer, unpredictable, personally. Now if no one has anything that they need from me, I'm going to go do some more stuff that would make you all question the physical boundaries of things, you would call it training. Naruto proceeded to head outside the ship and jump onto the surface of the water before running off into the distance. Agarum and Miss Valentine were out on deck as they watched him run off atop the surface of the water, who the is this guy? Miss Valentine yelled. Nojiko smiled, he's complicated. Naruto Aniki. Johnny and Yosaku yelled simultaneously, fleeing across the deck, call Samahata off. Following at their heels was the scaly sentient sword, 
now seemingly way more mib than usual and completely uncovered by its normal bandages, growling at them with teeth bared at them from the top the entire way. Naruto put on a pondering look, no. You both looked like you were getting stagnant with your training and this way you can stay on your toes. I might have given Samahata a little too much chakra though. If you keep complaining about it I'll increase your weights and see how you do then. Bang Naruto leaned to the side to avoid a swow before throwing a fist full of shuriken behind him. Nojiko shrieked and rolled out of the way of the sharp weapons before firing at Naruto again, hold still so I can hit you, and stop throwing those stupid bladed stars at me. Naruto grinned, now if I did that, how would you ever learn how to hit me? I can hear you that I'll probably be the hardest thing you ever shoot at. If you can hit me, you can hit anything. Now back to dodging Noji-chan. Naruto yelled as he chucked more shuriken at her, oh you're so lucky I can't afford to use the real thing and have to throw the blunted training ones at you. Miss Valentine stood near the wheel of the ship watching in amusement, I've heard of multitasking but never like this. Yo Uzumaki. Soren yelled from the crow's nest, we're coming up on some land here. Naruto looked up at the acid spitter and nodded. He placed his fingers to his mouth and whistled, Samahata. Come here, you can stop tormenting Johnny and Yosaku now. Samahata was currently locked in a clash with the two men who were marveling at how strong an unwielded sword could be. It disengaged and returned to Naruto's hand, purring as he gave it some chakra before rewrapping it to return it to normal size and sealing it back up. Bang Nojiko attempted one final swow at Naruto before he burst into smoke and ended up replacing himself with one of the bullseyes strewn about on deck. Nojiko suddenly ducked and rolled just as Naruto appeared behind her and made to wrap his arms around her with a kunai in one of his hands. Naruto blinked in surprise, how did you know that was coming? There was no way in you actually felt my presence just now, I made sure of it. From her place on the ground from where she rolled to Nojiko shrugged, I don't know. Something just told me you were going to do something like that so I rolled out of the way. The same thing happened the other day when we did this and you ended up cutting that wire that had all of those weapons hidden in a trap. I stayed away from that place for the entire fight, and then when we were done you went over and took the trap apart. Naruto looked at her strangely, and you didn't tell me this because. The entire time I figured you just didn't feel like using the entire ship to run away from me that day. You wouldn't go over there no matter how hard I tried to corral you. Nojiko couldn't really answer him, it was like I knew what you were going to do. Naruto stared at her for a few moments before grabbing her chin and tilting it up to examine her eyes. No, no spinning evil red eyes. Good, because that would have been a little too much for me to handle right now. The way Naruto had been intently looking into her eyes put a blush on Nojiko's face, Naruto-kun what are you doing? Naruto grinned down at her, what? You can make out with me in a tavern but I can't even touch your face Noji-chan. That's not fair at all. Nojiko pouted and turned away with the blush still on her face, Yunami, Nojiko mumbled, I was drunk. You can't hold that against me. Naruto chuckled, I won't. But I did hold you against me when we were in. Anyway, I just got hit with some deja vu and was looking for something in your eyes that might have told me just how you did that just now. I would say that you sensed me, but you and I both know that you didn't because you seemed surprised yourself that you pulled it off. Naruto pulled her to her feet and walked over to the wheel to pull them into port. Miss Valentine walked down to where Nojiko was standing with a smile on her face, you like him huh? Nojiko averted her gaze, I think I somewhat confessed to him and ed him at Whiskey Peak. He seems to be waiting on me to go any further though, he said something about me getting to know him better, but he's so secretive. You wouldn't think he was by talking to him, but we actually know next to nothing about him. Naruto stretched out his legs as he, Johnny, Yosaku, Nojiko, Soren, and Miss Valentine found themselves on dry land, alright, Agaram is watching the ship along with a mess of cage bunchin. Just head back to the ship when you're done with whatever it is you're doing while we're here. Ahem. Miss Valentine held her hand out in an expectant gesture, the money for the food. She said somewhat impatiently. Naruto gave her a perturbed look, you're getting awfully frisky now that you know I won't flat out kill you aren't you? You're lucky that you're so wow or else I'd give you the Soren treatment just out of principle. He then proceeded to hand her a wad of bills, Noji-chan, go with her please and make sure everything stays on the up and up. Sure thing Naruto-kun. 
Nojiko said offhandedly before disappearing into the village with Miss Valentine. Naruto then turned to Johnny and Yosaku, you too. Yosaku cut him off with a roll of the eyes, we know Aniki. Don't do anything stupid, and find you the second that things don't seem right. And, Naruto asked impatiently. Johnny sighed, if we do wind up getting in a fight and we lose, prepare to get our s kicked upon our return to the ship. Naruto gave him a steely look, because. Both men sighed and answered simultaneously, it's all tough love. Good men. Naruto said, satisfied with their answers, now get out of here. As the two swordsmen went their own way he turned to Soren, and that means that you're with me. Soren grinned cheekily, what? You still don't trust me. Naruto shook his head, it's not necessarily that. It's just if you f out again at the sight of some marines I'm going to have to drag you out of there before you get us all busted. You understand, I need to keep my crew and our guests safe. Soren sighed, you don't understand man, but I'll just wait. I won't do anything in case we come across any marines here, you have my word, but one of these days you're going to see what I see when I see one of those uniforms, especially since you have a bounty on you. Shouldn't you have one too? Naruto asked as they both made their way into the village, now that I mention it, that Hina lady knew who you were when she first saw us, and I think they were stationed there to come after you in the first place because they weren't even on me until we started fighting. Soren averted his gaze from Naruto's direction, your point is. Naruto's eye twitched, what the did you do to them Soren? If you're stuck being my responsibility I need to know what kind of backwater crap you were getting into before you met me. Oh not much really, Soren started, training, stealing, fighting guys with bounties for sport, killing a vice admiral, he said in a small voice. What? Naruto asked indignantly. What? What? Soren asked in return. That last thing you said. Naruto tried to pry, giving Soren a scrutinizing glance, what was that? Soren played dumb, fighting guys with bounties for sport. Soren. Naruto yelled, seriously, what was that last part? Repeat that for me please, I need to hear it again to make sure I'm not insane. He rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, well you see, I kind of killed a vice admiral a few months ago. But I swear it was completely legit. He totally had it coming, he was a complete and total douchebag. Naruto's eye twitched, so when I found you, Sora nodded, yep, I was pretty much on the run, hiding on that island. I'm insulted though, all they sent after me was a captain. I'm worth at least a commodore coming after me, even if it was just a feeler. He looked over at Naruto tentatively, so what does this mean? Naruto shrugged, nothing. I just needed to know what you did. A vice admiral, really? Was he strong? Soren moved his hand in a wishy-washy fashion, he was in the giant's squad. All he really had on me was size, and strength, and girth, and maybe durability. Look, the point is I beat him, killed him, and now I've got a bounty. And it's probably bigger than yours. Maybe. Naruto said, if I got 55 million for killing a punk captain in his unit then I can only imagine what you got for killing a vice admiral that was a giant. The vice admiral, and a load of his men, but that charge is complete bull because he killed them himself when he was trying to hit me. They just used me as a scapegoat. The giant's squad is pissed off at me though. Naruto grinned, you've got enemies huh? I like that. It keeps things interesting. Soren returned his grin with one of his own, what about you Uzumaki? Have you got any enemies? Naruto shook his head, nah. All of my real enemies died a long time ago. I'll probably be making some more while I'm helping you all achieve your goals, so don't worry about that. My goals? Soren asked, are you considering me a part of your crew? Naruto's grin turned wry, are you saying that you really don't consider yourself one of the crew at this point? The other day you pretty much said you were going to fight Crocodile with us, which means that you're fighting someone I directed you to fight. Soren scoffed, I'm not amped for fighting Crocodile because you told me to. I'm excited to do it because if I can beat him that means that I'm all the closer to being ready to kill the Shichibukai that I really want to destroy. Naruto raised an eyebrow, and that would be, Soren smirked at him darkly, you'll know because when I see him I'll be tearing his head off. Agaram noticed Yosaku and Johnny reboarding the ship not too long after disembarking, did you finish your business that quickly? Johnny and Yosaku looked at one another before Yosaku spoke up, we didn't really have anything to do. We were just killing time and stretching our legs out. 
Johnny nodded, yeah, we just wanted a little break from training. But we thought we should come back and help hold down the ship until Naruto Aniki and everyone else make it back. Why would that be? Agaram asked genuinely. Because. Yosaku started, we aren't sure, but we saw a ship that was like ours not far from here. That means that it's a marine ship. It looked personalized though, like Naruto Aniki's ship, but without the orange. Agaram stroked his chin in concern, so the marines are after you all. Johnny cut in, don't be so quick to jump to conclusions. I didn't see any marine markings on it. Maybe someone took a marine ship like the way Naruto Aniki did. It could just be another pirate you know. Are you done yet? Naruto whined, I want to go already and the log pose already readjusted. Let's go. Nojiko glared at him, shut up Naruto-kun. Just because you can stomach the crap on the ship doesn't mean I can. Miss Valentine is taking care to make sure that we have fresh foods and ingredients. Naruto and Soren had linked up with Nojiko and Miss Valentine in the marketplace where the women were still shopping. Naruto whined, but I'm bored. Let's go already. I want to see what makes the Grand Line so scary. Other than the Sea King, the huge continent, and the Super Wow Princess dancing for my aesthetic pleasure I haven't seen Jack on this trip. I'm almost done. Miss Valentine claimed, now make some of your copies to grab the bags full of stuff. She lifted her arms to show them covered in full bags that were soon cleared off by the requested cage bunchen that set off to drop them at the ship. I just need to get us some fruits and vegetables and then we'll be good for quite a while. I already have tons of lemon juice on board. Soren suggested, what about that? Miss Valentine laughed at him, shaking her head, you are all so lucky. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Just know that you're all extremely lucky. Soren opened his mouth to respond when a flyer hit him in the face. Naruto pulled the piece of paper off and read it, his eyes widening the entire way, you're kidding me right? He fped it over to show a poster of Soren's wanted picture, 200 million belly. You've got to be ing with me. Soren laughed nervously, I told you I've killed a lot of marines. A lot of marines. Like a ridiculous, exorbitant, ludicrous amount of marines. I'm like the boogeyman of the marines at this point. Listen to the man. Came a stern, calm voice, getting the attention of aimed people. For the last three years, Soren has been evading and killing marines set out to detain him. Including Vice Admiral Declan of the Giant Squad. Soren chuckled at the sound of the voice, Drake, the man in question was somewhat muscular. He had reddish brown hair and lengthy sideburns, and had on a white plumed head hat, with a domino mask on his face. On his chin was the marking of an X. He wore knee-high boots and gloves that came to his elbows, leather pants, and an open leather shirt, revealing another X mark on his chest. His belt held in a saber as well as a four-bladed axe. Soren grinned as he looked at the man, X, Drake. You've sure come far from Rear Admiral haven't you? And that scar on your chin didn't heal too well did it? You shouldn't have gotten in my and Declan's way. Yes, Drake said, you and Vice Admiral Declan. Flashback 11 months prior, a giant stood in front of an entire village of people with long black hair, a marine's cap, and a closed marine coat. He stood between the villagers and their village with his aimed underling marines standing around him. By order of the marines, we have discovered that Soren of the Plague has been identified as taking refuge in this village. Therefore a thorough search is ordered to be conducted for his whereabouts. The sight of the Miv man unnerved many of the villagers, but upon hearing that all that was to take place was a simple search, they visibly calmed down. They were calm, right until he leapt into the air and crushed a building before kicking another. As the villagers panicked once more he let out a deep laugh, what more thorough way to search an area of suspicion than to flat out destroy it. He continued to kick over and destroy more and more buildings, reducing the village to rubble, laughing the entire time as the marines kept the people from doing anything, even if any were a match for a true giant. Oi. A voice called from one of the destroyed buildings, what the? Rubble was tossed aside to reveal a rather scuffed up Soren rubbing his head. He noticed the destruction that had been wrought around him, hey, what happened here? This was actually a nice place. So this is Soren. The giant called out, I thought you would be bigger. Soren looked up at the figure towering over him, I don't think you really have an impartial opinion on that front. I am Vice Admiral Declan. The giant turned back towards the villagers, so you were aiding and abetting a fugitive of the world government were you. You should all know the penalty for treason. 
Before he could continue he yelled in pain at a burning sensation on his leg around his ankle. He looked down to see his pants eaten away and his flesh visibly burning. A misty haze flew from Soren's body, they had nothing to do with me being here. None of them knew, I stole everything I ate and drank and none of them were aware of my presence. There was no reason to destroy this place just to smoke me out. Declan stood up straight as he ignored the burning in his leg, as long as you are eventually brought down the destruction of this village is an acceptable price. Soren frowned, so you're one of those kinds of people aren't you? Fine, that means that I won't have to feel bad about cutting you down to size big boy. Declan laughed uproariously, do you have any idea what you've gotten yourself into boy? Killing so much has gotten you the worst kind of attention. You're fighting the best of the best now, and I don't leave s like you alive to even give you the opportunity of rotting and impel down. He kicked debris directly at Soren in an effort to crush him. Soren jumped high into the air to dodge and began running across the ruined landscape to close the distance between the hulking existence of the giant and himself. Declan slapped his MIV hand across the ground and kicked up dust and debris directly in the path of the charging Soren. As the diminutive Soren was caught in the smoke, Declan leapt into the air and belly splashed directly where he had kicked up the smoke screen. Grinning to himself he chuckled as he figured that he had crushed Soren underneath him. Man that would have ed if that had actually worked. Declan looked onto his back to see Soren standing there, what? How did you survive that? Soren sweet dropped, I moved. You didn't seriously think I was going to stand in a cloud of dust and wait for it to clear did you? Declan growled to himself, I would have seen you move if you had left the dust cloud. No one is that fast without using Soru. Soren grinned, well I don't really know what that is. And you probably should have rolled over or something because you gave me the chance to do this, eb eb no sum rot rot claws. Soren dug his nails into Declan's back, getting a good hold of him due to his acid powers giving him a good grip. As Declan cried in pain, Soren placed his body flat against his back, I'm not done yet, eb eb no haifu rot rot skin. With a loud sizzling noise, Soren slowly melted into Declan's back. The giant rolled along the ground, screaming in pain as Soren dissolved through Declan's back muscles. Declan rolled over many of the marines positioned around the outside of the destroyed village as his innards were liquefied. The villagers broke into a panic and scattered away from the scene while the marines tried in vain to calm their vice admiral down, some paying for it with their lives. Eventually he came to a stop, laying on his back with one final death rattle as Soren emerged from the bubbling M that used to be his chest with a frown on his face, that guy was really a vice admiral. He must have been fast tracked or something. End flashback, Soren nodded a wiped a tear of joyous reminiscence from his eye, yeah, good times. And don't blame me for that scar on your chin. I didn't tell you to try and stop the idiot from rolling around like he was on fire. Naruto gave him a dry look while the women looked at Soren apprehensively, you melted him from the back to the chest, quite. Drake said, I have never understood your animosity towards the marines. Soren shrugged, that's because you aren't me. You're just lucky that you quit, otherwise I'd be kicking your right now for even trying to hold a civil conversation with me. As a matter of fact I'm still getting kind of pissed off by talking to you. Naruto raised an eyebrow, how do you just quit? I figured that if the marines were anything like my military you couldn't just quit. Naruto stared at Drake for a moment before pointing, you went rogue didn't you? Yeah. Soren chirped, and that's why I mildly respect this bastard. Because he didn't buy into all of that absolute justice bull I hear the marines spouting all the time and decided to go his own way. You do know that they're going to come for your right. You knew way too much to just leave Mr. Rear Admiral. Drake let an almost unnoticeable smile cross his face, my bounty is higher than yours, 222 million to be exact. Dr. Vegapunk really doesn't want me walking around privy to some of the things I know about the marines. Naruto sweet dropped, you know, I'm starting to think that the size of your bounty is more about politics than being a bad mother or like I originally thought if you two have bounties bigger than me. Soren growled, I'm not weak Uzumaki. You got me off guard the first time. I didn't know you could control water. Naruto smirked, there are still a lot of things about me that you don't know. Drake grew tired of the conversation, well I have nothing more to really say. I will leave you with this however. Beware the pacifista, and stay away from Kato, he's mine. With that he turned and headed off his own way.
Naruto waved and yelled off at the retreating Drake, I don't even know who or what any of the last three things you talked about are. And I'm not entirely sure that I care. Naruto pointed his thumb at Drake, he seemed nice. Soren chuckled, you haven't fought him before. Are we done here? The blast from the recent past was fun and everything, but staying here doesn't seem like such a good idea if Drake is here. The marines really are more than likely on his, and I fight marines on my own terms. I'm not sure. Naruto turned to the women, are you all ready or what? Nojiko looked at Soren, why yeah. I guess we're all ready. She got a wordless nod from Miss Valentine. Two days later. Stop being afraid of Soren Noji-chan. Naruto said, sighing as he sat in a meditative stance on the deck of the ship, are you a marine? Nojiko, now dressed in white fur-lined parka with the hood pulled up in black mittens as it had gotten snappishly cold all of a sudden, shook her head, no. Are you, whoever it is that Soren wants to kill and drink fruit punch from his skull? No. Nojiko said again before cringing, I seriously hope not. Well then. Naruto said brightly, stop being so skittish around him, he's not going to hurt you. Sheesh, you would think that after spending time with me you would be used to hanging out with crazy people. Nojiko twirled her pistol on her finger, you aren't, go off and kill me, crazy. You're, ah he's so dumb and cute, he can't possibly take care of himself, crazy. She winked at him, that's the good crazy, it's why I'm here. Naruto sniffed, uh huh, and here I thought that you were here because I'm sexy. He smirked, that's why Miss Valentine is here. Yeah right. He heard from inside, you knocked me out and captured me remember. The only reason I'm still here is because it was either die alone when crocodile comes for me, or go out with a fighting chance and die with you and yours. The second option seemed better at the time. Miss Valentine finished, laughing from inside. Ah. Naruto drawled, you say that now, but pretty soon you're gonna love me. I just know it. Naruto shunshined from his spot to directly behind Nojiko, Noji-chan low. The sound of a gunning and the pistol being placed under his chin made him stop, seriously, how are you doing that? It's creepy. Nojiko shrugged, I don't know, but I like it. I can tell when you're going to do this stuff Naruto-kun. I don't think it works on anyone else but you though. Nojiko put the gun down and giggled when Naruto wrapped his arms around her. Soren yelled down from the crow's nest, why is it so ing cold? Soren sniffed up a nose drip, I ing hate the grand line. Wasn't it like spring a few days ago? Naruto yelled up to him, either get a coat from the the marines left on this ship, or get a girl to snuggle with like me. Naruto accentuated this by giving Nojiko a squeeze, either way I want you to shut the up about it being cold out here. You don't hear Johnny, Yosaku, Miss Valentine, or Agarum complaining about it. They were smart enough to change into winter clothes. No. Soren yelled down, I'm not wearing a godded marine coat. Then freeze your balls off for all I care you dumb. They don't even have the marine insignia on them. Naruto yelled at him as he escorted Nojiko inside. Soren got a tick mark on his head, oh go Nojiko you bastard. Fine. Naruto yelled back, I will. Bang, oh come on Noji-chan, that was basically a dare. Bang, whatever. You know you want me to. Bang, ha. That's three swows, you're out. Whatcha gonna do now Noji-chan? Crack, ow. One day later, well, well, well. Naruto spoke from his position at the wheel, see Agarum. Naruto gestured to the ship out ahead of them to the familiar ram-headed ship, it looks like we caught them again. I told you our ship was faster than theirs. Agarum got restless as he realized that Vivi was extremely close once more, well hurry up and take me ashore so that I can find the princess. Naruto shook his head pitifully, slow down guard dog. Naruto made a cage bunch and to pull the boat somewhere near the going merry while he cupped his hands by his mouth, Johnny, Yosaku, you're with me. We're going with Agarum to find the Strafuts. Hi Naruto and Iki. Both men ran up to Naruto, decked out in winter gear, and stood at attention. Naruto sweet dropped at how fast they had made it over to him, Kami, do they adjust to the new weights I keep giving them in just one day? How is that even possible? Right. Well get ready to disembark. He turned to Soren who was still in the crow's nest, you're in charge, don't sink my ship, and keep the girls safe. Soren, covered in blankets, stood up and looked down, what the could possibly happen? He took a moment to think before sighing, okay yeah never mind, you've got it. 
good. Naruto then grabbed everyone and Shunshine to shore while his cage Bunshin continued to maneuver the ship. After trudging through the snow of the unidentified island they eventually came upon a town buried in what appeared to be an avalanche, with villagers attempting to dig it out. Naruto walked up to the closest person, Hey, sorry to bother you in the middle of what you guys are doing, but I have a question. I know it sounds somewhat odd, but have you seen a guy with a long nose, a guy with three swords, or a guy with a straw hat? One of the villagers spoke up, a few of those people sound like the ones that Dalton and all of the others took up the mountain by the ropeway. Naruto frowned, any telling when this ropeway will come back down so I can take my people up there. They're friends of ours. He looked around vacantly, where are we anyway? You're on Drum Island. One of the villagers helpfully supplied, and we don't know. The only trolley that leads up there has already been taken. Naruto sighed and pinched the space between his eyes, of course it has, well thanks. I'll get up there somehow. With that, Naruto got directions and took off with Agaram, Yosaku, and Johnny towards the indicated mountain. As they neared the foot of the mountain Naruto looked at the mountain disdainfully, I'm only taking one of you up this thing, the other two are climbing. Feel free to divvy up the responsibility of who does what amongst yourselves. Johnny and Yosaku argued amongst themselves for a moment before coming to a decision that Johnny spoke up with, we'll climb if you let us take our weights off. Naruto shrugged, fair enough. With a hand sign and a glow of the bands on their wrists and ankles the two sighed in relief and began getting reacquainted with not being weighed down, now get going. Agaram watched skeptically, like relinquishing a few pounds of weight would really make a difference when they actually start climbing. In a burst of snow, Johnny and Yosaku ran and began climbing the face of the cliff with their bare hands, dropping Agaram's jaw in disbelief. Naruto wiped a fake tear in pride, I'm so proud of them. They better not die of hypothermia on the way up though, he then turned to Agaram with a disdainful look on his face, let's get this over with. You can't honestly say, Agaram started, that you're going to climb this mountain while carrying me or you. Naruto groaned, trust me. I hate the idea just as much as you do, but if I didn't do it you would just about not being able to see the princess, and I really doubt that you're capable of climbing this thing yourself. Johnny and Yosaku might not be able to do it, that was why I had them take their weights off so that they had a fighting chance of pulling it off. Consider it training. He still didn't feel comfortable with doing it, how would you even accomplish it? Naruto rolled his eyes, I'm going to throw you on my back and run up the wall until we reach the top. I don't have to run, but I want this nightmare to be over as soon as I can and running up a sheer cliff wall is the fastest way to make that happen. Now shut up and get on, and we never speak of this to anyone by pain of your horrible, horrible death. Naruto threatened as he lowered himself to the ground to allow Agaram to climb on his back. After getting the large man situated on his back, Naruto bounced on his toes a few times before jerking his neck to the sides, cracking it to warm up. He then set out in a reasonable sprint up the wall, ignoring Agaram yelling by his head as the gravity started taking hold. Two hours later, Agaram continued screaming as Naruto blasted past the edge of the mountaintop and landed on his feet at the peak. Naruto got a tick mark on his head and dumped the man in the snow, shut the up. I should have dropped you the second you started wailing in my ear. You're so lucky that killing you would have probably gotten the princess upset at me. He blinked for a moment. Actually come to think of it she doesn't know you're still alive, so I can just drop you over the edge for my trouble. Agaram backed away in fear, what about your two crewmates? They haven't arrived yet from where you ped them. Naruto stopped his murderous thoughts, huh, yeah. But they aren't as fast as me. I'm sure they're fine though. With Johnny and Yosaku both men stood against a cliff wall, hey Johnny. Yosaku asked, his hand slowly pulling his sword from the scabbard on his back. Yeah Yosaku. Johnny responded, his fingers trailing the hilt of the sword at his waist. Should we try to kill Naruto and Iki when we get out of this? I mean I know we would lose and everything, but this is a justifiable reason if I ever had one to do so. Yosaku stated with a twitching eyebrow, I could deal with the daily kickings and increasing our weights just for kicks. I could handle doing all of the useless chores that he has us do because he's a lazy. I could even deal with him sicking a living sword on us, but ping us after jumping off one of these things heads and leaving us to our own fate is unforgivable. Johnny sighed, I think we should just shut up and fight. And then if we survive this we can worry about climbing the rest of the mountain. 
and then if we're still alive after that we can think about maybe trying to beat up Naruto and Iki. I'm sure he'll tap dance on the back of our heads if we just ask him to later. Standing in front of them were about two dozen Miv snow rabbits with claws and sharp teeth bared at them. Yosaku rolled his shoulders as he held his Miv Nodashi out in front of him. We could always just turn around and try to climb before they attempt to tear chunks out of our ass. Johnny stroked his chin with his free hand in thought. Possibly, he then got a feral smirk on his face, but that's not what Naruto and Iki would do in this case. Yosaku rolled his eyes, kicked their ass. Johnny nodded, the one who gets the least has to take all of the chores until Alabasta. No arguments, no negotiations, and the loser also has to sharpen the winner's sword on command with their own whetstone. Yosaku shrugged, you're on. He ducked down and picked up a snowball, bring it on you furry bastards. He then pelted one of the MIV carnivorous rabbits with it, setting off a chain reaction of the snarling beasts rushing at the madly grinning swordsman. With Naruto and Agarum, Naruto sniffed and nodded confidently, yeah, they're fine, and if they aren't then I'll just go down and get them a little bit later. He looked ahead of them, get up and look alive curly. Agarum looked up where Naruto was looking to see a MIV castle with tons of people outside of it. The two made their way through the crowd to find Usopp and Bibi at the head of the people. Naruto walked up behind them, looking at the open door of the castle, so what's going on? Usopp kept his eyes forward and answered, Luffy beat up the king here and now everybody else is inside. Naruto nodded, I would ask what the you all ended up getting into to cause Luffy to beat up a king, but I have a feeling that any explanation you could give me would make me call him an idiot at least once and laugh uproariously at least twice. Usopp turned around at the sound of the familiar voice only to yell in surprise, Naruto. What are you doing here? Bibi looked at Naruto, equally surprised that she saw him again, Mr. Whiskers. Hey. Naruto frowned, now that's not nice. I told Miss All Sunday to tell you all I said I'll see you soon, and after I came all this way to give the princess here something special. Naruto reached into the crowd and dragged Agarum out by his shoulder, I believe you were missing this. Bibi looked at Agarum in shock before launching herself at him in a hug, I thought you were killed when you tried to sail away Agarum. Agarum patted her back consolingly, it's alright princess. This man saved me from the explosion and offered his services to help me meet up with you and take me to Alabasta to east us. He has been most surprising thus far. Yeah, I'm awesome. Naruto said dismissively, now what the is going on around here? Two hours later, Naruto sat in Nami's room, provided for her in her sickness, with a dry look on his face, so you're basically telling me you ended up pulling off a glorified coup d'etat and you weren't even trying the entire time. Getting a nod from Luffy who was sitting cross-legged on the floor a grin slowly started making its way across his face, that, is, awesome. Luffy's grin matched Naruto's own, I know right. Luffy then blinked in confusion, but what are you doing here? Naruto pointed a thumb at Agarum who was doting over Bibi, asking her questions about how she had been and how the Strafuts had treated her, because this guy was obsessive and wanted us to head straight to Alabasta. We were going to just keep island hopping since our ship is faster than yours and we figured we would beat you there or catch you anyway. Looks like we caught you. Zoro looked around, didn't you have more people with you last time? Where's the bald guy? And where is Nami's sister? Naruto waved off his concern, they're on the ship. I only took Agarum, Johnny, and Yosaku ashore. Zoro kept looking around, where are they, outside? Naruto looked away sheepishly, ah, uh, yeah. Sure let's go with that. It's technically accurate. With Johnny and Yosaku, 17. Johnny yelled as he straight slashed through one of the Mib rabbits before jumping away from the pounce of another. 17 my. Yosaku yelled as he held off one of them with his blade, we took out like half of them with tandem moves. They don't count. Johnny resheathed his sword as he found himself surrounded by three of his foes, yeah they do. I beat them so they count towards my score. Yosin Ixen, primary flash. In the blink of an eye, Johnny drew his Uchigatana in a circle around his body with a spin, only the shining tip of his blade was visible, 20, he said as the rabbits dropped around him. Yosaku grinned, well in that case then, the red headgear wearing man tensed his muscles and dug his feet deep into the snow before lifting the still struggling rabbit in the air with his sword before bringing it down in one mighty downward swing forward, Inryoku Tsukumidasu, gravity grabber. As he slammed the rabbit into the ground, 
a shockwave ripped out from where he hit the ground, carrying forward and sweeping up five more rabbits into its wake, throwing them off the mountainside. Yosaku turned to Johnny with his nodashi sitting on his shoulder and a eating grin on his face, 28. Johnny had a tick mark on his head as more rabbits came bounding up towards them both, smug bastard, were not done yet. The next day back out at seat Naruto decided to travel the last leg of the trip to Alabasta alongside the Strafuts as the two ships proceeded to sail closely next to one another. It didn't take much to rid the other crew of their suspicions about Miss Valentine once Naruto had explained the entire situation, how he caught her, how Inns came for her, and how she was actually pretty helpful. He was currently amusing himself alongside Soren on the going merry at the expense of one blue-nosed reindeer who had decided to leave Drum Island with Luffy and his crew. The two were sitting out near the figurehead of the ship, chuckling to themselves as the humanoid reindeer tried concealing himself behind the mast. Trying, is the keyword here since he was only hiding half of his face, the rest of his body was sticking out in clear view. Naruto looked at the little reindeer with a miv smile on his face, this is so amazing, I don't even think I have to say anything. Soren snickered, do you think the rubber guy would hand him over to us to join our crew? I wonder if he could fly a sleigh if I hooked him up to one. Nami's fists crashed down on the top of both men's heads, stop teasing poor Chopper. Soren sat back up with a growling expression, orange chick I will melt. Naruto got behind Soren and slapped a hand over his mouth, we weren't teasing him Nami-chan, honestly. A talking reindeer is actually bad, I kind of wish I had him on my crew. Naruto held his hand over an increasingly agitated Soren's mouth as he attempted to flirt with Nami, so tell me how much you've been missing me while I've been gone Nami-chan. Has it been lonely at night without a blonde teddy bear to hold on to? Hey. Sanji yelled as he stormed up to Naruto, who are you to say such thing like that to Nami-chan? If anyone here is her blonde teddy bear it's me. Naruto opened his mouth to begin an argument but stopped short as he felt his hand burning. He let go of Soren's mouth as a mist of acid came out, actually spraying Sanji in the face, putting a smirk on his face. Naruto and Sanji both hopped around the deck, one holding his hand, the other holding his face, it's Soren. Could you just ask me to let go of you like a normal person? Sanji ran around aimlessly, gah. My eyes. This won't mess my face up will it? Soren laughed loudly, no, just jump into the ocean to neutralize the devil fruit power, you'll both be fine. Stop crying you wimps. Both did as instructed and upon entering the water yelled out in pain once more as they vaulted into the air, landing back on the ship glaring at Soren who decided to jump the short distance between the two ships to return to Naruto's. They were currently sailing close to a wow spot when he had directed them to jump in the water. Naruto watched Soren leave and put a hand on Sanji's shoulder, I'll tie him to the front of my ship later in his sleep. That actually put a smile on Sanji's face. No one else was really paying attention while they were pinged through the steam produced by the underwater volcano as Luffy and Usopp were fishing, Zoro was sleeping over on Naruto's ship as it was markedly quieter, and Nami had gone over to Chopper and Bibi who had been talking with Nojiko who had come over to visit with her sister. However one cry of alarm from Luffy, Usopp, and even Bibi's duck Karu alerted everyone else, ah. We caught an Okama. A what? Was the intelligent reply from Naruto. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author. See you guys in the next video.